Last year, but one. Uh, we've, uh, so you've never gone past this stage? No. no. Okay, you guys have played Ligi Dogo many times? Upper. I've played the Ligi Dogo twice. Last year we had the same league. This year we had the same league. Now for you. Uh, for you, it's the same national league. How did it go last year? Last year we lost to them in uh, the first match. We lost in the next match in Jim. I'm ready to. <clears throat> Coach, Go TV Shield, you've never gone past this round. How do you approach it this time? Uh, this time we are trying because uh, we pre prepared well and uh, we are hoping if the boys are going to play according to our plan, we hope we are going to go for a second round. Now, you know Ligi Ndogo quite a bit. You lost once to them, you drew. Uh, this year you haven't met them. From your knowledge of them, how do you approach this game? Uh, approach of this game, uh, we need uh, to concentrate, a lot of concentration, because uh, anything can happen. It's football, it can go either. And uh, it can, we can draw, then we go to penalty. We've been pre 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 preparing for even the penalties and uh, everything. So we are ready for it. And uh, they like to have an extra man in midfield. Your midfield looks like where you actually get the goals. You've gotten 12 up front. You've only gotten three. So your midfielders are your strong point. Yeah, in football nowadays, anybody can score, especially the, the, the formation of play and the way we are playing. We normally use the midfielders because they are too intelligent. They can reach their sc their score. Most of the time, they're in a position they score according to our, to our, our formation of play. All right, coach. Well, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Same in a position. This time we are trying because uh, we pre prepared well, and uh, we are hoping if the boys are going to play. Yeah, he's, he wants to talk to you. Uh, one, two, three, check. Hello? Oh, okay, cool. Um, crap, what was I going to ask him? <laughs> crap, what was I going to ask you? You're removing the questions? Okay, I need to know what I asked them. And your Nanel Kamichagua impact players. When you make prepare, oh, oh, celebrate. Coach, I don't want to pile on the pressure for you, but it's the first Go TV game, uh, Go TV Shield game live, and it's your first live game ever. What's going through your mind and the players? Mm, not much really, but uh, I, I hope uh, the players don't get overwhelmed by the. Coach, Go TV Shield, you've never gone past this round. How do you approach it this time? Uh, this time we are trying because uh, we pre prepared well and uh, we are hoping if the boys are going to play according to our plan, we hope we are going to go for a second round. Now, you know Yeah, he's happy, he's happy. Philip is happy. Chico is happy. Hey, Mbacha. Mbacha.
Well, good afternoon. Welcome to City Stadium for the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport live from the heart of Nairobi in one of the oldest, if not the oldest, stadium in this country. It's football galore as we wait to see Moyas in action against Ligindogo. Now remember, these guys must win today. Period. No talk about draws. It has to be decided this afternoon right here on this Yes, and then the feature. Yes. Okay. All right, well, here's a man who's been relegated before twice, actually, and a man who's been in charge of teams that are struggling. This is a cup that you're used to. Oh. Gilbert Zalebo. Yes. 
I mean, uh, it's in the evolution. I mean, this trophy, as you call it uh, today, Go TV Shield, has evolved from being a President's Cup into uh, the FKF Cup, into Moy Golden. and Moy Golden Cup, and now that Go TV has President. come into it, it's big time. It's big time. Spectacular, very good. You know these players very well. You're very conversant with these teams because this is the league with which you, in which you belong. <laughs> well, one team that is sitting preciously at the top and the other that is sitting precariously at the bottom. A big match. Oh, big words for a not so learned man here, Gilbert Celebo, our analyst. Game time. He bummed me. Alrighty. Got two of my players here. I think I'm going back to football. I need to get back to football. You want to get back to coaching? Is that why you want? You want to destroy Luka Mal? No. He's got his mark out after him. I have not tested his job. All, everything that he's doing here, I do it all the time. Somebody else might just look at it as something that is needed and not. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Nairobi for the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport Moyas. Ligindogo about to battle it out here for a chance to meet one of the 16 teams in the Kenya Premier League in this tournament. This cup is vital. There's no draw here. Someone has to win and someone has to do that right here this afternoon. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. It's a big moment. These two teams, we will get into them in just a second. But first off, first things first, Go TV. I've said that, Go TV Shield, presented by Supersport. Felix. Yes. First thing, why the FKF Cup, which is now Go TV? Why, why sponsor it? Uh, thanks, uh, Chico, for that question. The reason why we sponsored um, the Go TV uh, Shield is because Go TV is a service for everyone, and we know Kenyans love soccer. So we thought that why not bring them uh, what they love most. Secondly, we know that um, soccer is very important to the content that we offer. So we decided to include that in, uh, as part of our offering so that Kenyans at home who are not able to come to, to the stadium for whatever reason, they can actually watch their, um, their, their favorite teams battle it out uh, for, for, for this cup. The other thing that which made us uh, go for this cup is because we are concerned and we would like to be involved in the promotion of soccer standards in Kenya. We know most teams have been uh, struggling, uh, particularly on the international um, uh, arena. So we want to build soccer and particularly today I'm very happy that Ligidogo is participating, which means that we are actually beginning to grow soccer from the grassroots and that is very important to us. We, we want to, to make sure that by the time our sponsorship is about five years comes to an end, soccer is, a totally, is at a totally different uh, level altogether. Indeed, at a totally different level. I love the people from the office. The bosses here, not used to being on TV. You're standing up very straight, sir. <laughs> Let's relax. <laughs> Just me and you having a chat. You're on attention. Thank uh, you. Very quickly here. Go TV. Um, the, uh, you know, digital migration. How accessible is Go TV for different people? Where are you in the country? Just educate us on it. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question once again. Uh, Go TV is really the service for everyone. Uh, what we have done is we have made the service very affordable. Uh, to buy Go TV now it costs only 4,500 shillings and for that you get the decoder, 
you get um, an, an antenna which you call a Gotena, an outdoor antenna, and you get one month subscription for for Go TV Plus, which is our top package. Now, once the first month is over, we have got three options for Kenyans uh, to go for. They can go for our Go TV Plus package, which is only 850 shillings per month, or they can go for our Go TV package, which is only 5.99, or finally they can just say to go for uh, for the Go TV Open. Uh, for which they will need to pay a once of fee of 2,600 shillings, and then they will, they will have access to um, to the free to air channels or the local channels. And really, that is our preparation in terms of the migration. When it happens, those who may not be able to afford the pay TV service, we are bringing them the option of paying a once of fee, and they will be able to, to, to enjoy their, their local channels. In terms of coverage uh, in the country, currently we are in six towns. We are in Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Eldoret, and Nakuru, and recently we launched in Malindi. And very soon uh, in the coming month, we'll be lodging in a few other towns. So we intend to bring the services very close to the people so that when the migration happens, no one is left, is left behind or, or they, they lose their favorite programs. Uh, that's good. It's all about you. It's all about the love of football, why you sponsored this and what uh, you're trying to do to make sure it's accessible to every single person. No one should be left behind. That, those are your words. Yes. During the league, we tend to give the man of the match something, you know, a walker yeah. or a drifter. You can't, you can't, you can't be left behind, as you said. What, what should we expect from you? Absolutely. Uh, for the for all the matches, we'll be giving the man of the match uh, a decoder. Um, uh, uh, you oh, know, is that is that what that's for? Yes, uh, this is like the decoder that we'll be giving them. Uh, they will get the decoder as well as the area which comes in a separate package. So really, it's not for nothing. Everybody, there's something for grabs uh, in the various matches that that, that we have. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this is what you will be getting as man of the match. Everyone else who's watching it, your game is live on, 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 on GoTV and, of course, uh, Supersport presented by Supersport. You play well and you will definitely be able to walk away with this. You know, we'll let Felix walk away. We'll get into this team. It's all about Moyas. It's all about League Indogo. And that game is very, very vital. It's the first live GoTV Shield presented by Supersport game. Let's get into the mood. Since its creation in 1956, the FKF President's Cup has been the top knockout tournament in Kenyan football. Modelled as a replica of the English FA Cup, a tournament where teams playing in association football leagues have the opportunity to dream of knocking off one of the perceived bigger clubs. Over the years, some of those dreams have been realised. Though it was these bigger clubs that have won the majority of the past editions of the Cup, but by here have emerged victorious ten times. Followed closely by their rivals, AFC, with seven wins. Tusker, Sofapaka, Mumia Sugar, Rivertex, KCB, World Hope, and Chemilil have all won the Cup at least once in their history. Over the years, the Cup itself has changed names a number of times. Each time marks the beginning of a new era in Kenyan football. In 2008, the Cup was renamed the FKF Cup. Or Mahia lifted it with a 2 0 win over Poster Rangers in the final. It was a year in which the Kenyan Premier League also received a massive boost. A blockbuster sponsorship between the league and broadcaster Supersport revamped and revitalized the country's top division. Five years on, and games are now shown in full high definition to millions of viewers across the continent. The professionalization of clubs created a better product for the players, the stakeholders most importantly, the football fans. There is the addition of Swahili commentary options within the East African region. In April 2013, a landmark partnership between Supersport and the FKF Nationwide League. 20 matches broadcast from the country's second tier football division. Now available live and exclusive to Supersport. It brings us here to yet another first. 57 years after Mombasa Liverpool lifted the inaugural FA Cup of Kenya, here today, we witness a new era in Kenyan football as GoTV and the Football Kenya Federation come together to announce the GoTV Shield. Now the chapter in Kenyan football begins with the GoTV Shield. I like that. It is basically the FA Cup 
of Kenya, <laughs> right? And these teams, which are in the lower division, are fighting out this time, this round, to ensure that they meet the big boys, the so-called big boys of the Kenya Premier League. And a man who's well conversant with this league, so to speak, you've navigated AFC Leopards from relegation in, back into the top tier. You know these teams pretty well. And if I'm not wrong, two of your players are actually going to play here today. Oh, well, definitely, Thiko. I mean, Chico. I mean, Ligindogo. They are sitting, you know, preciously at the top of the league. I mean, Moyas are sitting uh, preciously at the top of the league. And uh, compared to Moy uh, uh, Ligindogo, who are struggling actually precariously at the bottom of the league. So, two teams that are coming into this thing, they know that there's no other chance. They have to come out to the victory, and it's got to be a blast here. Indeed, uh, contrasting fashion. They come into this well cup in very contrasting fashion but you take a look at some of the results that have been uh, coming through Ulinzi Warriors 5-4 over Intercity uh, that was just a few days ago Talanta good victory over Top Fry well, that's a big one because Talanta plays in the same league like uh, Top Fry. So that one for them to beat Top Fry 2-1 with very good players in Top Fry, you know, top class players, that was a big, big plus for them. And look at International down there being beaten by Wazir Wakazi. These are all guys who have played <laughs> in the Premier League for many years. Experience. That was a big surprise. Indeed. Talk about the thorough one was West Sugar there with KNH suffering a 6-1 loss. Some more games will be played tomorrow. Muhoroni Young versus Black Mamba. Zoya versus Mount Kenya United, and on Sunday, which game tickles your fancy? Well, Karibangi Shacks versus GFE 105. These are two teams that are playing very well. They're very young, very, very good players, technical players, and I want to believe that there is where we will have the, uh, the ultimate goal there. All right, why don't we talk about these two teams? Moyas is the home side, so let's start talking about Moyas. Gilbert. Educate us on Moyes. Well, Moyes, remember, this is a, a, a team that uh, is actually sponsored by the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And uh, you look at the formation, the way, the way they are playing. They are playing some very good football. You know, they are actually uh, top of the table in the Group One Zone A, uh, Division One Zone. And uh, they they are coming up against a team that is languishing at the bottom of the league. So a very very big uh, game here tonight. Talk about the coach. What do you know about him? Well, what should we expect? Well, the coach. He's just come from. Uh, from uh, the Confederations Cup where he actually saw Brazil tearing apart uh, uh, the Spaniards at the Confederations Cup. So he comes in with a lot of flair. I want to believe that he's coming in with some Brazilian flair. Let us wait and see what happens. All right, so, so, so we know he likes, he favors the 4-4-2. I know you have it all down there. What kind of players do you think are key to that formation? Well, one thing that is very important, one person that is very, very key in this particular formation is uh, Sanu, Sanu Sikola. Sanu Sikola, you know, with six points up to his credit up to this point, is one player that he will be looking at. And uh, as I was speaking to him, he comes in playing a deep midfield. He's playing with five players in the midfield. So you expect what I was talking about, Brazilian flair. Okay, so that's deep in the midfield. Up front, questionable ability up front. They've not produced the goals. Actually, the goals coming from the midfield for both these two teams. But let's talk about Moyes. Well, they have Lipese. Lipese has six goals to his credit at this point. He's one gentleman who comes deep from the midfield. He's called some very crucial goals. And one thing that is very, very important is his set pieces. He's just outstanding. And that's one player that you'll have to put tabs on. Now, would you be concerned about the front line? Uh, well, if you're playing with a lot of midfielders, it means that any of those midfielders can easily translate those chances into goals. So you don't expect a striker to score in this one. You'll definitely expect people playing from the deep midfield to come in and score the goals. All right, well, that's Gilbert Salebo educating us on Moyas. They will be up against Ligue Ndogo. The man in charge of Moyas is a man who prefers the 4-4-2, as you've heard us mention, and is a man who depends mainly on the midfield. Let's hear from him. This is a big moment, a big game. They've met Ligue Ndogo before. Let's get, you know, pick his brains on this one is uh, Sanu, Sanu Sikola. Sanu Sikola. Uh, this time we are trying because uh, we pre prepared well and uh, we are hoping if the boys are going to play according to our plan, we hope we are going to go for a second round. Now you know Ligi Ndogo quite a bit. You lost once to them, you drew. Uh, this year you haven't met them. From your knowledge of them, how do you approach this game? Uh, approach of this game, uh, we need uh, to concentrate, a lot of concentration, because uh, anything can happen. It's football, it can go either. And uh, it can, we can draw, then we go to penalty. We've been pre pre preparing for even the penalties and uh, everything. So we are ready for it. 
and uh, they like to have an extra man in midfield. Your midfield looks like where you actually get the goals. You've gotten 12 up front, you've only gotten three, so your midfielders are your strong point? Yeah, in football nowadays, anybody can score, especially the, the, the formation of play and the way we are playing, we normally use the midfielders because they are too intelligent. They can reach their sc then score. Most of the time, they're in a position, they score, according to our, to our, our formation of play. Is uh, Sanus, Sanus. Oh, well, there you go. You've heard him. His midfield is very, very intelligent, and he expects goals from anywhere. He's gotten a couple from the back, uh, very few from the front. Four times what he's gotten from his strike force he has uh, through the midfield. Your, you know, general thoughts and after listening to the coach. What well, do you from from what the coach, um, what I've gathered from the coach is that he's going to play a lot of uh, short passes in between his game, and the one player that is going to be extremely important is the big guy. The big guy in goal, you know, huge experience, huge experience. Having played ah, in the so you're Kenyan, already leading us to your impact I'm, players, I'm all right? So the man you, the, between the posts, let's go. The man between the posts, huge Adache, Adache Evans. He has played for Madare, you know, won with Madare in 2008, the Kenya Premier League. He brings massive, massive, massive uh, experience, especially in the back line. A wealth of an experience from that man uh, who will be in between the goals. What about this boy? This is the guy I was talking about, Sanusi Kola. The guy has already scored six goals from the midfield position. He's a stronghold, as you've heard from the coach. He is one player that Moyas will be looking up to to provide the necessary goals up front. Lipese Alex, four goals. In between the two, they've scored ten goals. Yeah. He is the man that they are looking up to to be able to provide the necessary experience at the top in order for Moyas to be able to run away with this game this afternoon. And this is very clear from what Gilbert is saying. It's, you know, a safe pair of hands in between the posts and then everything else lies with the midfielders to do a spectacular job. And I'm sure Moyes will be very entertaining to watch in this first live game of the GoTV Shield presented by Supersport. But then they won't be playing along, alone in this pitch. They have quite a bit of competition, if I may say so myself. We'll come back and talk about their opponents. <laughs> No, Aku, Aku, no. Let us enjoy. Let Aku, us enjoy. Aku, no. They have chosen us because that time we played, we played the second half. Well, the DSTV people are the ones who have chosen you. So, Mimi Said Saki, to put more pressure to you and tension, that to do this, do this. You know our formation, you know everything, you know our role. And we have a. Just uh, five seconds too late to the left side of your screen. Uh, Moyers were shouting, the war cries were out, and they are excited. They look very lively and expect so much from this game. But they are up against Ligindogo. Ligindogo, tell us about that team. 
Well, it's a, I mean, a team that has come from a big organization, League Dog organization, you know, that is based uh, purely in uh, Manchester City. So you have seen a lot of players of their players going into into that uh, Man City side. You have players like uh, uh, you know, a player like Guiteti, who is in is who is playing in the Law Academy in in Man City. They have uh, big players in Azam, you know, playing for Azam United. So it's a team that uh, has very experienced players and a very experienced uh, office to uh, back up with. Indeed, but uh, the coach, what do you know about him and his, you know, style of play or what he fancies? Well, I think if you look at uh, the way they've lined up their, their, their squad, you know, it's the same team that knows Moyas very well. They play very good football. They play, you know, passing game. And the, the main undoing has been that they have not been able to put the balls in the net. So they are struggling. But uh, in game-wise, I think they do match up properly to uh, Moyas. Let's talk about their struggles. I'm seeing this piece of paper of yours. Now, they've lost Oma, the man who scored most goals for them. He's gone across to uh, Kibera Celtics. Now they have only one man up front. Most of their goals, all from midfield, up front, they're absolutely blunt. Well, that could be their main undoing in this particular game. They are two teams that know each other very, very well. And I think tactics will count out more. If you don't have your main striker, mm -hmm. then you need to utilize the midfielders that you have to try and break this game for them. So I want to believe that he's going to have a lot of movement from the midfield towards the final third. You, you said they stand up, uh, step up to the plate, but you know it's the first time they've not played in this tournament. It, whether whatever the name, be, uh, Bold, Go, Moy Golden, uh, FKF Cup, they've never played in it. Right now, it's the Go TV Shield. Cameras are here. They've never played a live match. The nerves will be creeping in or not? Well, I can tell you. I mean, they're doing very poorly in the league. But you know, this is a knockout tournament. You get beat, you you, you just move away from this. And you have 1.5 million shillings and 500,000 shillings waiting for you to be able to get to, this, to the finals of this. Talk about I, this will definitely be a moral booster for this team as they can come into this game. Talk about piling on the pressure. He's telling me money. We know it's live. They've never been in this tournament. They're up against a team that is better off in the league than they are. I, I, I'm thinking, we'd like to hear from the coach right now whether or not the pressure is piling up mm, not much really but uh, I, I hope uh, the players don't get overruled by the uh, stage of uh, or, or the sight of uh, the cameras but uh, hopefully they will cope with it but for, for myself I'm okay with it it's also your first time to play in the Gold TV Shield formerly the FKF Cup um, what are your expectations mm, not much not much but uh, we expect I mean uh, we hope to give it our best shot and uh, hopefully uh, get to the money bracket hopefully and then uh, if all goes well why not win the, uh, the cup let's talk about your team though you're usually the type of coach who likes to pack his midfield and leave one up front no Clifford Ouma who scored three now with K uh, Kibera Celtics how do you approach this one and who do you prefer up front uh, my team is, is a collective of uh, uh, all the players uh, it, it's not a collective of individuals so uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, I'm okay with the, uh, with, uh, with the squad that I'm having and I'm looking forward to a very positive performance from, uh, from uh, the boys that uh, will be in charge. I really don't get that. Uh, every coach will tell you it's a unit, you know, no one stands out. But even you have some players who stood out. Let's, uh, tell me. I think I think he looks he looks a little bit worried, but he has a big <laughs> player. He's a huge player in that central defense. Played for AFC Leopards, went to, uh, to top fry, come back. Arthur Weyula has been the mainstay in their defense. I think his massive experience in the Kenya Premier League will really boost uh, League Dog as it moves into this game. How, 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 how vital is he in this setup? Four five one. Well. He's the cog. He's the cog. He's the pillar at the, at the back. He knows exactly how to attend to, uh, to this game. He has played at the highest level. I think that man, Arthur, will be the man Not to mention he's played charge. under you. Who's next? <laughs> well, another player who has played under me at FC Leopard, <laughs> Samuel Machio. He's also a very, very, very experienced player. And I can tell you, this is a player, if you don't watch him, he comes deep from the midfield. He has top shots. He has top, 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 uh, top kicks. You want to believe that this is the man that's going to change. A game changer, be a game changer this game. And I'm sure you trained him, huh? Oh, well. And uh, Mike Maciek, he has three goals to his credit at this point. Very massive. He's huge. He has got a lot of pace, a very good speed, and he's one of a player that can really, really bring havoc to any team, any defensive team, any time.
All right, so those are the three players he's looking at for Ligindogo. Keep your eyes on him. We'll question him at halftime, see how those guys perform. Um, but your final thoughts, Moyers, Ligindogo, how, wh what should we expect from this game? Well, Open? These, these are two teams. These are two teams that know each other very well. You expect a beautiful, beautiful game here. It's a knockout, and nobody is going to sit back. Everybody wants to come out here and try and get the necessary goals very, very soon. So... I expect an explosive match this afternoon. Explosive match it is. Fine, thank you very much. I'd just like to point out that from, you know, now on, Go TV Super Select 2, you can watch the Kenya Premier League every weekend that it is live. Also, it will be live on 9 East Super Sports. So that's, that's very good. Welcome to the Kenya Premier League Go TV subscribers. And of course, this is your cup, the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport Live. Coming up from City Stadium, it is Moyers fighting it out against Ligue Indogo for the next round. in Kenya is getting continental recognition now and has never looked more colorful now that what was before the Moy Golden Cup and also the President's Cup and most recently the FKF Cup is now renamed the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport and it will be coming to you live. Well, that's the action that will be at the Nairobi City Stadium and uh, all the teams um, can participate in the FKF Cup. It gives a chance to everybody else who's not in uh, the leagues, who's not in the Premier League, to be able to take part in a knockout tournament that then culminates into getting a winner who is always called the Cup winner and would go for continental glory in what was previously known as the Cup Winners' Cup. And indeed, uh, the biggest club glory in this East African nation of Kenya has come through the Cup Winners' Cup. At that time, the Mandela Cup, which was won by Gorma here. But it often starts at the grassroots, where there are smaller teams that are taking part in it. And this weekend alone, there will be seven Go TV Shield marches being played in and around the country. The technical director of uh, the Football Federation Kenya is uh, Jacob Gosbule, also a super sport analyst. He's on the side stuff as well because he knows that the talent does come from these knockout competitions. And um, he's here to see whether or not he can support uh, one or two other talents that may 
warrant uh, an elevation into the national team. So that's just the stage on which these two sides will be coming on. Moyas, which is an acronym for Ministry of Youth and Sports, as it was before, will be playing with a uh, with a back of four, and then three in the middle and three at the front. Uh, I think I'll be told about what formation that is later on. You've got to look out for even Zadache, a man who's got a Premier League experience before in this team, but they've got their top scorer in uh, the team as well. well Silas Wawire and uh, Suroma Belo in there for the side. On the Ligue Dogo side, again, looking like a similar formation. And uh, they've got their man who has scored two goals, Philip Ugochuku in there. And their captain, Samuel Machio, who has previously played for AFC Leopard, is also there. Mike Machik has scored three goals in total for the side. And uh, they will be also relying on him for the goals in this game today. And a power bench on both sides just tells you that the two teams will be taking this game very, very seriously today. The man at the center of it all is Isaac Ocheng, his uh, marketing manager. He will be assisted by the businesswoman Dorcas Wanza and uh, Roslyn Oyuer will be the second assistant referee with Isaac Bebusi as the fourth official. So it's a very first time that uh, the marches will be going live on television. Kisko Karaoke, as is well known to his uh, fans and uh, friends and peers, is a coach of Moyas. He's assisted by a former Premier League player, former Tusker FC player, Edward Karanja, on the bench. Uh, they are the ones who want to guide this side in uh, the GOAT TV show presented by Supersport. They are in Division 1, Zone A, Group 2, and uh, they're leading with 26 points. That's the Moya side tying with Posta Rangers, which played also in the Kenyan Premier League last season. The only difference is that Moyas have got a better goal difference that puts them on top of uh, the league there. Michael Kamura is the coach of uh, League Indogo team. Now, don't be fooled by the name that means the small league. They've got players in very big leagues as well, and currently they have an under-17 side in um, Europe at the moment, in Manchester specifically, and a couple of players apparently also joining the Manchester Academy. But the man you love to watch out for here is uh, Brian Yator. He'll, he'll be just in about 29. He's got three goals so far for the side. And uh, together with Mike Machik, they are really, really trying to get their act together. They're in Division 1, Zone A in Group 1, and they're sixth with 16 points from 11 marches. It doesn't say much about what they can do in a knockout tournament because uh, those in the know will tell you that a knockout tournament is just that. It's a knockout tournament and anything happens because you've got only one chance. The Moya side has been talking about missing uh, a player who joined uh, Muaroni Youth recently, Ezekiel Otuoma, but I don't think that will be anything to mull about at the moment. They would just be going straight for a win if then they want to prove that they still have the clout for it. Mr. Isaac Ocheng at the center of it all and just confirming with his assistants whether they can uh, proceed in the first ever televised march of the GOT TV Shield uh, presented by Supersport and it's Moyas versus Lee Dogo. I am Bernardo Tieno, I will be with you in the commentary booth for the 90 minutes together with Gilbert Salebwa who was already standing on the sidelines for you and uh, in the Swahili booth, Jack Oyo and Michael, I think it's Ali Hassan Kauleni will be taking you through the Kiswahili commentary. Uh, you can easily switch to that by pressing the language button on your remote control. Choose one of two or two of two for the language of your choice. Press OK and uh, you will be with us in uh, the GOAT TV Shield uh, matches being played today. Well, Gilbert said a lot on the touchline, but uh, now that we get into it, then we will see what the formation will be like. Of course, it's being played in uh, an artificial turf. So again, who masters the turf faster becomes uh, the one who then dictates the pace here. The Moya side in uh, an old green attire, the Ligue Dogo in yellow and black, uh, and playing from left to right on your screens, the Moya side from right to left. 16 uh, Premier League teams were well given a bye to the second round of this uh, Go TV Shield uh, tournament. And that just means that 16, 16 others from the knockout phase will join the 16 in the Kenyan Premier League. And four teams have been given a bye. The four quarter finalists from last year, that's uh, Gorbaya, FC Leopold, Super Parker, and Tasca, given a bye into the quarters and rather will be seeded as well, just so that they are separated and are not knocked out at a very early stage. Now that's the format we'll be going for. 
And, uh, at the moment, the pace on the field is looking uh, nice and jolly in these very early stages. The one thing you can always enjoy about the marches that come from the lower divisions is the speed and just the genuine talent that is displayed by the players in uh, those marches. But here we'll have to see whether or not it will be the Moyas FC side or the Ligue Indogo side that will be dictating the pace early and uh, the expectation of the results. They do know each other, of course, from playing in the lower division. And I think that makes it more exciting, doesn't it, G um, Gilbert? It is exciting, it is exciting. But again, you're looking at two teams, one that is uh, sitting uh, uh, precariously at the bottom and the other one that is enjoying uh, a, a game of its lifetime at the top of the game. So this is a tournament that you come in, if you're beaten, you're out. So it's going to be an explosive match here, uh, if you ask me about it. Well, Again, the two teams are at least not playing in the same uh, league. Uh, I mean, not playing in the same zone uh, in the Division One league just makes it more exciting because then uh, uh, the Moya side will try to prove to Ligi Dogo that they merit being the top of their zone A1 standing. Uh, but Ligi Dogo then uh, need to show what they can do in zone A2. But with a knockout, like you say, I agree, anything does happen. Well, watch out for the man uh, Zanusi Kola in Jersey 11 for the Moya side. Uh, and also Libese Alex. Between the two players, they've scored 10 goals. And that is a massive scoreline for uh, two players in a club, isn't it, Gilbert? It is. I mean, it shows you very well that uh, these are very resolute players, especially around the box. If you give them a upper chance, they will definitely tame you. So the two players have to be really watched in this particular game if Ligue Indogo doesn't want to concede goals. It's Brian Yatara, the scorer of three goals. He was trying to get the ball forward, but frantic defending as well. There'll be a lot of transition uh, changes in this game and uh, a lot of speed as well. Even just for the sheer fact that they are younger players, full of energy. And I think that uh, the fact that they're on television as well adds some good positive pressure on them, Gilbert. Well, I think, uh, uh, Bernard, if, it, if I, I were the coach, I would not uh, urge them to concentrate on the television. I'd rather ask them to concentrate on the game. So I want to believe that they know this is a cup final for them. One win, they go into the second round. So concentration and focus on this particular <laughs> match. <laughs> it's no wonder some players defy the coaches. <laughs> it's a big stage and it's showbiz at the end of it all. If I was one of the players in there, I would give it a little extra something, you know, from what the coach said as well. <laughs> it's the first corner of the game that uh, we are having. Yeah? Oh, it's a, it's a, well, it's a corner. Uh, a good number of men are organizing themselves uh, from uh, the Lake Dogo side in yellow. Nice and floated into the area and a hanging header. This one goes up out of the field of play. It's going to be a goal kick. Kisko, karaoke on his feet, wondering why that happened as it did. The header, of course, uh, not on target. Uh, National Mode is about to try to get the Ligue Dogo onto the score sheet with that early header. We'll have to look out for the formation in the midfield as well, but this is the foul that was uh, called uh, by the referee just a couple of minutes from Samuel Bashir, the captain of the side. Raw talent is what people say you find in a game like this one, Gilbert. Well, you find raw talent, but at the same time, if you get this kind of talent, you build on it, you can really make a very good youth program in this country. And I hope... I saw the technical director on our screens here. I want to believe that uh, that's exactly why he's here today, to look at the talent and try to build on them. Well, it's going to be a free kick, and it is for Ligindogo. Now, the Swahili commentary team would tell you Ligindogo stands for the small league. <laughs> it's just one of the uh, earlier outfits that decided to have uh, a youth league. It's a massively nice cross that comes into the area. Oh, Ligi Dogo tried to pick it up. It's Kola. And again, now the Ligi Dogo with a chance at a shot at goal here. It's not accurate, a left foot shot. We've got to watch out for the Astro Turf. It does wreck havoc sometimes on uh, what people need to do. And Simpson Ntagaya finds out that after a good steal, his turn and shot looked like it was going to be accurate. But I think he just uh, lost his footing somewhat there. Oh, Ligidogo getting a little bit uh, 
confident here. Samuel Chow proving that he's got more skills than just goalkeeping. That's the big man from the league in Dogo that you also have to watch out for. National Mondi, one of the central defenders on the side, being coupled by a man called Philip Mbaeme Ugochuku. No, I don't need to tell you that uh, he's of Nigerian descent. Playing in the league in Dogo outfit. I expected a little bit of action in the midfield, Gilbert, and uh, expected that uh, whoever also battles to win that midfield might just control the game in the early stages. Well, I think they're still sizing up. You know, they've not created any meaningful uh, opportunities at, at in front of goal. They're still looking at uh, each other, and probably it might unlock in the next 15 minutes or so. Well, sometimes I wonder if coaches know it's going to unlock in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> why we have to play the other minutes? Why not just go straight to the 15 minutes, Gilbert? <laughs> <laughs> well, they always provide the intellect to the game, don't they? It's a quarter for Boyas, the Ministry of Youth and Sport. And uh, quickly take it by Samuel Karaoke. They try to change the winger, the header. It's not going to be troubling the goalkeeper at all. Siroma Bello, the Nigerian, uh, going for that header. They need to work it out in, at the front, the, um, the Moya side. Now they're forced to play all the way back to the goalkeeper. And even the Dutch is a goalkeeper who's had a lot of exposure, more than probably everybody else on the field here. As Boyers begin the build up from their side, trying to go through the midfield and uh, losing possession. Can Ligin Dogo then uh, capitalize on what they've got? Uh, well, a good blend of yellow and green in there, but the yellow looked more predominant up front and they just couldn't get their yellow stockings on the ball there, Gilbert. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a big, big tussle, especially you look at both teams. Say, you asked me about the formation. They are both playing with a crowded midfield. Uh, Moya's playing with a 4-3-3 kind of formation with Sam Sanusi, Lumumba, and Siruma taking charge of that central midfield. And if you look at uh, Machio, they are playing what you call a, a diamond midfield, where Machio, Yator, Odawa, and Gida are playing in kind of a diamond shape. And uh, they have uh, Machek and Joroge right at the top. So a very, very, very crowded midfield for, uh, for me in these two games. Well, pardon me, Gil, but, but I don't own any jewelry. How does the diamond look? What's the shape? <laughs> <laughs> Just so that I can... <laughs> well, if you look at Machio, he's playing right behind the two strikers. And then right on his left is Yator. On his right, there is Yida. And then at the tip is Mr. Odawa. So uh, that is what we call a diamond midfield. It's kind of uh, compact towards the inside, and they allow the two... Uh, fullbacks that is Juku and Omondi to do the overlapping on the outside so it's like pulling a square on the two opposite sides <laughs> that's the shape you're right about that. thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> should get myself some diamonds soon <laughs> well then that's the formation in the midfield whether or not it's working is uh, another story altogether but the Moya side seem to be trying to push forward at the moment the um, attacks well few and uh, far in between from both sides that just means that they've got to, you know, try and do it much better. That's a foul throw from uh, Ligi Dogo. It's one of the basic things that uh, should not be seen, especially at this level, because you assume that uh, this is where the big players are being modelled in uh, to the future. The interception from uh, Sanusi Kola. Uh, it's picked up on the left side by Ligi Dogo. Oh, they seem to mix themselves up a bit. Uh, but Mike Machik ultimately appealing for and getting a handball and a foul for his side. Uh, it's going to be taken from the left side by uh, Lee Gindogo. Uh, just about three of the Lee Gindogo players moving in to try and go for a conversion. There's uh, Omundi Oden in Jersey 4. One of the taller of the players as uh, the Moya side now organize their wall. Samuel Machio and uh, his fellow midfielder organizing how to get the better of this one. Oh, just a spiritual effort to get the ball out of the area because off the field of play for a throw in, uh, it's going to be for uh, Lee Gindogo. The 
one thing that they learned very well as well is to take the very long throws. Uh, and uh, Eva Sunchuku was up to the task. It's been picked up by Moyas now. Well, getting it back from Samuel Machio, or rather, getting it back from uh, Cassidy Lumumba. And then out of play for a throw in. And that one has been taken by Njuku. Again, trying to intercept the midfield play. It's back in the midfield for Moyas. Now finding some space on the outside right. And uh, Alex Libese going for it. Going past his marker as well with a good cross as well. Oh, this was going to be a lovely volley had Cassidy Lumumba made contact with that. But good defending as well coming in from Ligidogo, Gilbert. Well, you know, Ligindoga has got very, very tall players in that central defense. So Mondi, number 27, and uh, the most experienced player were Yula. So if uh, Moyas have to score, then they have to at least put the balls on the ground because they're a little bit faster and they're a little bit short, especially moving forward. Well, good cross that came in here. And uh, the person that you see in the picture is Cassidy Lumumba organizing himself for, um, you know, a volley. Well, Cassidy Lumumba, of course, with uh, four goals to his credit at this point, I think this is one player that they really want to look, have to put taps on because had it not been for that central defender there to clear that ball, we would be talking of some other businesses at this point. Well, I don't mind talking about business, but later... <laughs> but we probably have been, would have been talking about the defence business as well in football. Uh, thank you very much, Gilbert. Well, it starts again uh, almost in the midfield for uh, the Moya side. And they're trying to use the wings now, but this would have been too long for Alex Lefesa to go for. It uh, is uh, picked up by the defenders on the Ligi Dogo side, starting the build-up. Well, Collins Odawa managing to get the ball back to his uh, central defender. And uh, Machek with a lovely left foot through baller. Uh, and Joe Girard just runs a little bit too far with it, but you must uh, credit Machek for that left foot uh, cross. She did too, Gilbert. Well, Machek has scored three goals and he realized that he wanted to split the, that defense. He did it very well, but then again, Jorogas first touch let him down hard. It that he had put that ball on the ground, then probably Machek would be laughing with the net at the point. Uh, they're forced to play it back to their defense. Uh, I think Ligin Dogo is organizing themselves better. Collins Odawa and then Machek now try to get it through again. And he's uh, devised a brilliant way of beating the defense by splitting it, like uh, Gilbert says, with a through ball. We'll see how best that can work for the Ligin Dogo side. For Moyas, they need to turn the possession they have into some progressive play. Otherwise, they're losing it a lot in the midfield. This is picked up again by Philip Ugochuku. And then Moyas at least get it off their defenser with Sanusi Kola trying to get it onto the flanks. Well, Siro Mabello assisting as well in the build up and trying to devise a way to go through the midfield. This is controlled by Alex Lipese and uh, becomes part of play in trying to get past the defense of the. Ligidogo side, but the finish is not that good. The final third is still letting Moyes down, isn't it, Gilbert? Well, they're playing some good movements uh, on and off the ball, you know, little passes, but again, they need to speed up their game as they move into their final third to be able to catch the Ligidogo players uh, unawares. But they are moving, uh, their movement is very legible, and that is why they've not been able to crack that uh, tight uh, Ligidogo defense. That's Anusi Kola again, who now plays it out to Siro Mabelo, who tries to get Lipesa on the right side, but it becomes just a little bit too legible. Never mind the fact that they will get a throw in from uh, all that speed work. They need to open up the spaces, the um, Moya side. They need to find space to play in. At the moment, they're boxing, boxing themselves deep into the yellow stockings and losing possession. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that uh, they would like to 
stroll into the goal area, which might just prove difficult, Gilbert. Well, I think uh, the tactics must change. You know, any time that uh, you, the opponent has the ball, you find that uh, Moyers are trying to clog into the middle. And once they get the possession, they don't spread out. And this has been their main undoing. So they need to start using the width instead of depth because that is where there are a lot of players uh, involved in the, in, in the game. Well, a foul throw that has been given back to the Ligi Dogo side. Uh, I was just about to go into a very intelligent debate on whether the game is technical or tactical, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'll leave it for now until we get deeper probably into the 25th minute. Because the Moya side is trying to keep possession and to draw out the Ligindogo side. Now, Ligindogo is trying to look for the slightest of opportunity to slice the defense through. So I'm not sure, Gilbert, if it's tactical or technical. <laughs> but a technical technique is all about ball handling skills. <laughs> it's all about ball handling skills. And that is exactly what both teams are doing. They are very, very technical, technical players on that team. But tactically, both of them have not been able to uh, <laughs> occupy to use that field very well because they are using depth instead of width. Three corners in total, and this one almost finding the net. I think it must have, it must have just touched the crossbar. Uh, and a good number of tall Ligi Dogo players were challenging for it. Can Moyas now go on the counter attack? They try to get Alex on the right flank. Uh, the defense quickly lobs this one back to the goalkeeper. Uh, and uh, Samuel Machio then playing it very safe at that moment. And good technique that Machio uses to get the ball back to the goalkeeper. <laughs> and, um, I think the only thing that needs explaining now is the technical bit. The technique is pretty easy. The tactic is pretty easy. The technical part can only be, exp only be explained by technical directors. <laughs> Let's get back into the game. Uh, look at the technique of the individuals here. Alex uh, Lipes is staying out on the right side and waiting for the crosses to come from uh, the defense for him. And he's got the speed as well. Now, that seems like a good tactic to me. Uh, and the Moya side decided to play very short, uh, you know, passes close to each other, trying to get into the Legidogo half. And I'm not sure if that technique would work at the moment. But they have possession again. Van Yida losing it. Uh, and a foul will be given to the Boya side. Sanusi tackled from behind. The Nigerian has scored six goals for the side so far. Between him and Alex Libesa, with whom they're partnering on the right, they've scored ten goals. Now, that's a good partnership, isn't it? It's a good partnership, but at, at, up to this point, uh, 19 minutes in the game, they've not been able to work out well they are not getting the necessary feed at the top i think they need to jig their midfield a little bit to be able to give them the necessary kind of passes to make an impact in this game well Ligi Dogo now challenging but check managing to keep possession this is a high boot and uh, the aggrieved party here will be richard olo i beg your pardon it should be Sven Yida of the league in Togo side. And they will get a free kick. The captain is Samuel Machio and a yellow card uh, to Ruben Munyao of Moyes. It's the first yellow card in this game. Uh, a chance to the Ligi Dogo side to probably get close up to the goal area. Samuel Machio will take it himself. Oh, the <laughs> contempt here. <laughs> but Sven Yida almost running the risk of injuring himself there without uh, attempting a bicycle kick, uh, Gilbert. <laughs> Well, I think he scored goals uh, using those kind of um, kicks and uh, probably at this time that artificial turf, the landing itself would be a big problem for him if he was to land in a bad, in a bad way. Well, it's just the technique that he used as well, Gil, but I, I, I think he was going to land a little bit awkwardly and that was dangerous. It's not the kind of place where you use that kind of technique, is it? Uh, Yida loses possession. 
going to be a throw in for uh, the Moya side. Well, just staying uh, away from the line to avoid the offside trap, the Moya side. And uh, by doing exactly that, then they get caught up in exactly what they were trying to avoid. Uh, so, Lucy Kola is the one who was in the trap there. Oh, another yellow card here. And Mr. Isaac Ocheng is clamping down hard on any tackles that he thinks might just uh, mess up the game altogether. The guilty man, of course, trying to appease the referee. No, that red card that was coming from Isaac's uh, <laughs> pocket was it meant to be. And um, I think that um, he's got to be happy with what he got at the moment, Samuel Karaoke. Well, that's him with uh, the push and the tackle from behind as well, and ultimately even handling the ball. That just means that there was uh, probably three infringements that the referee sported on Samuel Karaoke. So he should have given uh, three yellow cards. Well, that would be very strange to get a football successively. But you know that two of them would translate, of course, into a red card. Uh, and he's just lucky that uh, he was penalized for just one, and that all those actions were on one move. Mr. Michael Kabure, the coach of the Liggy Doggo side. Well, giving instructions on exactly how to position yourselves in facing the ball, I think that's what he meant, Gilbert. Simama <laughs> Ibi, as a Swahili, just to translate, uh, stand like this. I don't know how the defender was standing. But, but he must have gotten the instructions right. Well, you're the coaches. You say very straight things as well. So what would that mean in a game of football? Like position yourself correctly? I think he meant face the ball, you know, all the time. This is uh, Boyas now trying to drive it forward. And, uh, oh, doesn't just change at all. The wing, uh, which was the intention. And then they pick it up again on the right. Um, well. If it were, if he wasn't losing his footing, then uh, Alex Libesse was in a very good position to try and challenge for a shot at goal. Again, the attempt is on the wings. A little bit of a tussle to try and see who will uh, get the ball out. I think ultimately it's uh, Ruben Munyao who had the last touch. He was trying to get the touch onto Ivan Sanjuku. It's again Boyas with a chance and a shot. This one is flopped by Cassidy Lumumba. The coach says that's all right. He play positive here. Okay. Kisko says it's in the language you'll understand easier. Play positive here, uh, Gilbert. What would that mean? Well, I think he's trying to tell his, to urge his players to try and, uh, you know, put the ball more into that final third and uh, play more positive. Because that kind of a <laughs> shot, that was not a positive shot. <laughs> Uh, get out on the right left and uh, this will be Munyao <laughs> trying to get a chance to uh, to move it forward and I guess now this is what is called positive isn't it a little touch from this one and it just pieces the net getting the goalkeeper off his line and Alex Libese almost causes an upset almost makes it into the net from uh, what would look like very harmless move Gilbert well, that's a big mistake by the keeper. You come out, you don't put your hands on the ball, and you've already left your goal yearning. I think that would have been a disaster because if the person would have put his foot right, he would be talking of another goal. I mean, at least a goal at this point. Well, National Mundi would have been blaming himself as well, but the goalkeeper looked like he was going to pick up the ball from the feet of National Mundi. Only <laughs> National Mundi's feet didn't have that ball as well. As uh, again, the boy has tried to begin the build up on the left side. This is given out as a throw in to Moyas. A better throw this time round. Alex Lipesa picks it up and uh, lays a nice one to Sanusi Kola. They try to build it up on the right now. Well, Richard Alo gets his shot deflected out for a throw in and tries to get Lipesa again. Well, Machek then latches onto it. Better idea to get it onto space. And uh, at least one of the most brilliant moves that you're seeing on the field is coming from that man in jersey three for the league in Dogo side. Consistently 
knowing just where to put the ball for his teammates and Mike Machek in as much as he's not so much on the ball seems like uh, it could be the playmaker in this one Gilbert he is actually the top striker at, at, at that point but you look at him he's coming he's dropping back very deep into the midfield collecting balls and uh, creating initiating the moves and uh, he has been very very instrumental especially in all the passes all the shots that have come from uh, my uh, big logo side well the attempt by Yeda is blocked Munyao latches on to it for the Moya side and uh, rather obviously plays it onto the flank occasionally you take up uh, you take out a little bit of uh, the pressure by just doing it in a different way uh, I think Moyas is just trying to draw out the midfielders on the Ligi Dogo side playing with their defense now and all the way to Siroma Bello out on the right finding uh, Samuel Karaoke on the wings and Karaoke fouled it's gonna get a free kick for the Moya side the green sharks need to organize themselves as well in anticipation of the free kick which is headed back by Sven Yeda Another interception by Evans Juku. While Moyas get position again. Ruben Munyao. Uh, and plays it to Zanusi. Who tries to put uh, Munyao through. But a good clearance by Philip Ugochuku. Very burning defender in the Ligindogo line. As Yida gets a throw in off the feet of this man. Zanusi Kola. So Moya is again getting onto position. Well, it's looking already like there's a little bit of tired legs in this field, uh, Gilbert. Well, it looks like, I mean, uh, they've actually slowed down the game, and uh, just when we thought that they're slowing down the game and they speed it up, so I think <laughs> that could be a tactic. It could be a tactic that Moya's. Uh, wants to use, you know, pre pretend as if you're not very, very much interested in moving forward, and then you just hit these guys on a break. And I think it almost worked for them in that particular move. Is that a tactical or a technical that move? That is a tactical uh, move. Sounds very technical to me as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> I really do think that they're, they're trying to catch the Legidogo side on uh, the counter attack, but they've got to organize how they're going to go for that counter attack. Munyao. On the left, and uh, Libes and Sanusi on the right are uh, the architects in chief of that one. For the Ligue Indogo side, they need Machek to be able to lodge, I mean, to keep possession a little bit and wait for support to come before he can release the ball because the diagonal cuts that he was making are now not working. This one's offside. It's ruled on uh, Alex Libes by the second assistant referee, Rosalind Oyuer. Uh, it's going to be a free kick for uh, Ligue Indogo. Looking at a man who has scored four goals so far. That's a better ball to Munyao if he can keep control of it. Easily dispossessed by Arthur Weyula. Well, they managed to keep it in play. Or at least that's what I thought the referee says. No, it already had gone out of the field of play. It's going to be a throw in and it's going to be for Ligue Ndogo. 30 minutes of play gone, Gilbert, in the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport. What's your analysis of it? Well, we've not had any clear-cut chances uh, created by both teams apart from, you know, that one corner kick by uh, Moyers into the League in Dogo side. I mean, by League in Dogo into the Moyers up. But again, it has all been football in the center of the pitch, not really opening up very well. And uh, let's wait and see. Well, the shot going directly to the goalkeeper. And the build up beginning from the boys' side. Ugo Chuku. Oh, he's got good physique for a central defender. Uh, and he's making good use of it as well. Cassidy penalized for that push on uh, Sven Yida. And coach Kisko Karaoke knows that he's got to have his band play a little bit harder up front. 
they haven't really created the chances. They haven't had a shot towards goal. And uh, after 31 minutes, Gilbert, a coach would uh, definitely want to get a little bit worried, wouldn't he? Well, I think, uh, as we said before in, the, in our analysis, that uh, Moyas have been doing very, very well, especially in their league, in the Zone A Group 1. Uh, they are sitting uh, at the top of the table. But again, the Gindoga has come in very, very uh, tactfully, and they've matched Moyas one-on-one, -on -one, and they've been actually on the ascendancy in this particular game in the last 10 minutes. So we expect that one goal would change the, dy uh, the dynamics of this, uh, this game. Uh, the battle for midfield control continues. Sadusi playing it to Ruben Amunyao and getting support from behind, but that was bound to happen. Ugo Chuku cuts it away from Alex Lipese and sends it out for a throw-in. That's Cassidy again. Well, encountering very tough marking from Ugo Chuku and losing the possession as well to Ligindogo. It's Njuku who will take it. Oh, Njuku tries to get it to Machik, but doesn't. Manitou, the cross gets into the eight box. Cleared by National Mondi. But then uh, Moyas try to come back. It's an easy take by the goalkeeper, Samuel Njau. 33 minutes of play, Gona. The very, very first televised match of the Goat TV Shield presented by Supersport. And uh, the Cup tournament in Kenya. The shot, a very weak one by Alex Lipese. Doesn't trouble the goalkeeper at all. Uh, and of course, these teams uh, would want to get uh, a chance to represent Kenya in the Cup competition continentally because the team that wins it outrightly then plays in the Cup Winners' Cup. Now, don't let that sound like a tongue twister to you. It's just that the Cup winners in uh, every respective country then will play in the tournament that is reserved for those who win the Cup in their countries. <laughs> and that would be a continental um, tournament, similar to the one that was won in 1987 by Gorbaya. Yeah, but you were a player that time, weren't you? Uh, a player was uh, more of an observer. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the days when you really had very good players you know out there for kenya and for the national team oh it's cassidy trying to bring it down on the left side goes for a shot himself the goalkeeper had already left his line but cassidy doesn't put that ball into the net oh well nice technique and try to confuse the defenders as well but a very abrupt shot the goalkeeper thought that he was going to go out for a cross well, you, do, you would blame uh, Arthur Ayula with a massive experience from uh, a top club in the country. I think he should have closed him down uh, in order for him to at least uh, deny him that particular space and time to be able to kick that ball. But uh, that was a very good execution there by Cassidy Lumumba. Uh, Bernard would call it a good technique. <laughs> and a good tactic as well. <laughs> Well, waylay the defense and make it look like you're going for a cross and then go straight for a shot at goal. Tactic. <laughs> Again, back in the midfield. And Cassidy then uh, is denied here. I think uh, the referee plays the advantage to Ligindogo. Oh, Machek has latched onto it and again releases the ball early enough uh, to his teammate with the goalkeeper who's already off the line. And uh, for the first time, I think the coach of Niki Dogo will be warranted to get annoyed. John Jorage had a chance to lob that ball over the goalkeeper way before now because the goalkeeper was off the line totally. And you've got to thank Mike Machier again for releasing John Jorogi on the right flank. Well, those are two players. I mean, the combination between Machek and Jorogi has has really put uh, uh, Ligindogo on, on, under pressure. Moyas under pressure, this particular one. And look at what happens. Moyas having one corner against Ligindogo three. They are under pressure at this point. Well, the right foot in swinger by Machio. Nice touch by the goalkeeper, Ivan Zadachi. That's all it takes to send the ball further off from his area. And then uh, the transition takes the ball all the way back to uh, the Ligidogo goalkeeper.
So it's going to be a throw-in. Just about ten minutes, nine minutes, if you'd like, of uh, play remaining in regular time. Uh, and a throw-in taken by the Moya side. Jao, uh, rather than Juku, then uh, quickly removes it from the area. The build-up is with uh, the Moya side and on the right side. They've got Ruben Munyao having changed sides as well and trying to partner with uh, Cassidy Lumumba. And then, of course, that means that uh, Alex Libese will have come to the left together with uh, Sanusi Kola. That's Sanusi. A better idea to remove the ball from the area by Samuel Machio. And moving forward by Collins Odawa. Jaroge then manages to get it back to Collins Odawa and a shot, well, took it as a cross and carved it right out of that danger area. Well, it looked like uh, Zvedi Ida was going to do a very good move there, but he lost possession and didn't get any benefit from uh, the referee. Well, he's got a chance to make up now. Legendogo dictating the pace in the midfield. Jaroge. And losing possession after working so hard to try and keep it. Megidogo still pick it up again as possession. Juku tries to cross it into the area. And uh, Machio probably does a better job. The flag stayed down. But that is not a good connection onto that ball. It goes off the field of play. It's going to be a goal kick. And it is going to be for uh, the Moya side. Gilbert. Dogo now at least creating the chances. Well, they've been the better side. They've been the better, better side, Bernard. I mean, for the last uh, few minutes, they are dominating in the midfield. They are splitting that central defense wide. You've seen Machek giving in some good passes right through the middle, and only Joroge has not been able to utilize those opportunities. For, for uh, Moyas, I think they've been very, very slow in their build-up. Even in their transition play, they've been very slow, they've been very legible, and they have to do something about it in the second half if they have to get any point from this game. Better dribbling being displayed by uh, the forwards on the Ligi Dogo side. There's absolutely no doubt that uh, Mike Machek was not going to get onto that one. But there is another chance to change the wings and get it at least to where there's more space. There's a lot of concentration on the left side where players are, uh, has also been concentrated for the last few minutes. And the throw in. Headed by Evans Juku. Then it's Silas Wawire who tries to play it with his uh, goalkeeper as well. But a good ball down on the right, Njuku challenging for it and executing the cross directly into the hands of Adachi. And Njuku almost running out of space on that right side. Can Moyas go for the first break now? Bibese has a touch on it, but then it's picked up again in the midfield. Sanusi for Moyas, but Chek steals it. And it's got Juki running on the right, or oh, he's already in the offside. I think he had been uh, spotted much earlier on. By the time the transition was changing, but this man is a good playmaker for the Ligue Dogo side, isn't he, Gilbert? Well, Machek, with three goals, I think he's been very instrumental. He's supposed to be playing in the top uh, in, in the top position there the, as a lone striker, but he's dropped back into the middle, collected balls. He's very collected, especially when he's executing those final passes. He's a guy that they will really have to put tabs on if they have to stop him from uh, giving the penetration passes. Well, the goalkeeper on uh, the Ligue Dogo side, shielded, of course, by his last man, Ugo Chuku. Uh, looking like a well-drilled team, especially in the defense, the Ligue Dogo side. And uh, the combination of the goalkeeper and Ugo Chuku, together with uh, the man in jersey for Arthur Weyula, and uh, the other defender, Philip. is really really working for the Ligindogo side 
Machio trying to cut into the midfield and then loses possession. And uh, Boyas starting the build up on their side. This is Munyao. Oh, big pardon. This is uh, Samuel Karaoke who's uh, changed sides with Munyao. Uh, goes for a shot. It's a weak shot. It will be of no consequence. It's going to be a goal kick. Uh, it's going to be for uh, the Legendogo side. So it's just about four minutes of play in regular time in the first half, Gilbert. If you were the coach of Moyas, what would you tell them? Well, at this point, I think it's just try to hold on and just go out of this uh, the first half in, in the goal, goalless draw here and try to make amends, especially in the second half. Well, right, Jirage then turns in a nice ball here. And the attempt for a touch by Machik doesn't quite work out. Jirage brought it in from the left side. And um, this time round, it could have been the best one, but Chick was going for that touch. Just evaded him by a couple of uh, inches. But at least it does well to try and uh, intercept it for a goal, Gilbert. Well, those two guys have been uh, a, a real pain in that center defense. They've turned uh, the defenders in and out, and that was a very good move there by Njoroge, only to be missed by Chick, who has three goals to his credit and has played extremely well, especially in this first half of this game. Well, that's the other man in defense, National Mundi, for uh, the Ligue Dogo side. So the four of them really working out here. Oh, this is going to be a bad one. National Mundi, Atawe Yula, rather, the guilty man here, gets a yellow card for that very deliberate, almost looking like a headbutt on uh, Alex Libese. Oh, it's going to be a free kick. And at this point, I'll also take a chance uh, at my own free kick. I will release Gilbert to go to the touchline for the halftime analysis. I'll take you through the last two minutes of uh, regular time in this one. The goalkeeper, Samuel Jao, getting himself ready for this one. And uh, the defense, of course, organizing their wall. This uh, is just as close as the Ligue, uh, as the Boya side would get to the goal area. Munyao looks like... Uh, is organizing himself to take it. And Mr. Isaac Ocheng, the center referee, says this is the distance and this is how you do your wall now. So waiting for the free kick. I think too bad looking like they would be taking it. Munyao on a left foot curve and probably also a direct shot coming from uh, one of his strikers. And that's exactly the way it goes. Uh, with a hard shot coming in from uh, Siroma Belo. But not accurate. Goes off the field of play. Kisko Karaoke. Giving instructions to his players. I think Mr. Isaac Ocheng has uh, signaled to the assistant referee that uh, one of the players uh, had something illegal and that needed to be attended to. And it's the Ligindogo player, Athawi Yula, who's uh, on the touchline for some uh, attention that the referee called for. And Moya is now running it on the right side. Munyao trying to get past two markers and he succeeds in it. Libese and now Oh, they left it for too long. Cassidy Lumumba was also leaving it. They tried to get it to the person who was best placed for a shot. But uh, Samuel Karaoke, oh, just takes the breath out of everybody else who had worked so hard to get the ball to that area. Lipesa leaves it. Cassidy leaves it. Karaoke and just uh, throws it overboard. Njuku trying to send it forward. We'll play one minute of added time in this one. And uh, a spirit of defense uh, coming in uh, from uh, the last man on the Moya side. That's Silas Wawire. As Nikidogo again bring in uh, the cross. That's an easy take by Evans and Dutcher, but that's because it had already got off the field of play. All right, it is looking like it's going to remain like that. That's the halftime whistle. At least at halftime, the scoreline has remained at nil-nil with the chances having been created. 
more by the Ligin Dogo side, surprisingly. Although Moyas would have looked like they were dominating play. The shots at goal coming in earlier from Ligin Dogo and then later coming in from Moyas. But uh, Nail Nail is a scoreline at the moment, and uh, it doesn't tell the full story. It just says that there's more that can be done, especially in the second half, to try and see who will take up the win in this one. But from the Nairobi City Stadium, it's a good TV shield presented by Supersport, Moyas Nil and Ligue Indogo Nil. <laughs> Why this goal is this game is still goalless is <laughs> beyond me myself. Currently, Moyas, Ligindogo, great 45 minutes, opportunities galore. But the problem has been in the league, and as is the case in this game, up front, very, very blunt. They've been dependent on their midfields, both sides. Their strikers, though, it's been a goal drought that they'll probably be wanting to get rid of very soon. Very disappointing first half in my books, goal-wise, entertainment galore, but what are your thoughts? Well, I want to believe that uh, Moyas came into this game, I think, overconfident because if you look at the way they're playing, they're kind of relaxed in this game. You know, they're moving the ball slowly, you know, touching the ball, but very slowly. But if you look at Ligindogo, they came into this game. To me, they were the underdogs, but they actually stepped up to the plate. They are playing very well. They have two guys up there, Joroge and, uh, and uh, Machiek. The combination with these uh, two, two guys is just absolutely fantastic. And it's just a matter of time, I think you will be able to see a goal from the Moyers lineup. Jeroge has been sensational, even in the league. For this team, he's been performing at top quality, top level performance. But, you know, Ligue Ndogo, Looking stable at the back, not so shaky, uh, but up front, same story as Moyas. Well, I think Moyas came into this game packing their midfield, but if you look at what has happened, is that uh, they are being split into halves, especially uh, any time that Maciek has the ball, he wants to put the balls right through the central defence, and it has worked more than three times. The only main undoing at this point has been Joroge. He has not been able to see the back of the net. Bet, absolutely you fantastic criticize, You criticise the, the, the front line of Moyas, but you're taking a lot away from 
the back line of Ligindogo? Well, I think Ligindogo, I mean, have been absolutely fantastic. They, Moyas has not even taken one single shot into that uh, 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 Ligindogo uh, defense. So I want to believe that uh, coming up, we should be able to see some difference, especially if the coach comes in there with the different tactics. Indeed, in case you missed though, here we go. Go TV Shield, presented by Supersport, live from City Stadium. Highlights of the first half here, and we can see uh, from the beginning, from the onset, Ligindogo looked quite, quite the team to watch out for. Uh, slowly faded away as Moya slowly came into it. Well, that is Machek. The, I think this guy is a true kanner. He's a very, very little fellow. Look at him. He turns around with his left foot, takes the first shot, and it goes above the bar, but he puts his stations right. Well, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cross there, but again, uh, look at the, the resultness of that defense. They've been very, very solid at the back. That is Atawi Yula, you know, very experienced. He knows very well that he needs to put this uh, 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 forward line at bay, and he has done exactly that. A bit of scrappy football through the first half, early on in the first half as the two teams try to settle here, uh, settle down some nerves. It's the first live game for them. It is the new cup, so to speak, Go TV live on both Go TV and Supersport, your world of champions. So, you know, we expected these nerves, but it settled down slowly. Maybe we'll see a better uh, performance in the, in the second half. Opportunities galore, well, like this one was absolutely big guy, The in. big guy, Lumumba, Lumumba there, Cassidy, turning Arthur Euler in and out. But again, his shot let him down. But that was a good try for them. Story of the Split first pass. half of them. Oh, yeah. Split pass. That's what I'm talking about. Machek gets the ball. He gets in between the two central defenders, puts the ball right in front of Njoroge. Njoroge was not able to uh, finish that one up, but you have to put tabs on that goalkeeper. Dache did very well to come out and thwart that effort. Machek Njoroge, the story of the first half seems to have lied right there with them. When you take a look at what the numbers say, same story here. Well, Ligin Doga have been on the ascendancy. They've shot three, I mean, eight times and three going on target. It shows you that they have the intention of at least going up. But look at the fouls. Seven against seven. It has been a ruthless uh, in, the, in the midfield. And the offsides, three against two. Look at the possession. 52, 48. Not very bad. It's pretty close. The Moyers on top. But again, Ligin Doga have had the ascendancy in terms of the shots at goal. Yeah, with uh, the midfield patch with up to probably at one time nine to ten players in that midfield, depending on the formation these two teams are playing, we expect it to be a very rough game. A lot of passing is what we expected from Ligindogo from you. The three players you mentioned at the start there, the impact players, what do you think they have performed? Let's rate them now. Let's start off with Moyers. Well, I think for Moyers, they've been outstanding. I mean, uh, if you look at the way they've combined very well, they've had, uh, they've, they've had uh, Sanusi in that uh, whole I'm mean, holding midfield role. He's been able to go up front. But again, their main undoing has been the man on the left, Munyao. We expected that with his pace, he would be able to open up this game, but he has not been able to do that. They are concentrating so much in that midfield, and Ligindoga have come out very, very, very strongly. What about the names you gave us uh, for Ligindoga? We've already talked about Moyes as you know, impact players. What about the Ligindoga impact players which you gave? Well, they've done very well, especially Machiek with three goals. He's done extremely well. Look at Samuel Machio, the captain in that uh, particular defense. I mean, midfield, he has been spreading the balls wide and the only men are doing up to this point. And I want to believe if they break, continue breaking into that uh, Moyes defense, those two players, Machiek or Jaroke should be able to get a goal for them. All right, well, we know how the boys on the pitch can perform for these two teams, but we do have options on the bench. First and foremost, would you make any change? And if so, what would it be? Well, I think for uh, Moyes, they, uh, they definitely need to, to make a change, especially they need to bring in Mwasie Kimeu, who is also left-footed, and bring out Mwasia, who is also playing on the left-hand side. He has been completely redundant in that forward line. For Ligindogo, I think they have been up to the task. They have created the chances. They only need to be a little bit more patient because the team is now collective. They should not make any changes, probably maybe towards the end of the second half. All right, so changes galore for Moyes is what you expect, and how soon? Well, I think immediately. Immediately, they should be able to bring in somebody to ply the left-hand side, where Moasia has been uh, completely redundant, and bring in a player like Kimeu, who is going to be a very, very instrumental part, especially if they want to use the width for their goals. So there you've heard it from Gilbert Celebua. Basically, those are the options they have on the bench. Moyes expect changes possibly soon. 
as soon as the uh, start of the second half or maybe early on. As for Ligindogo, it's been pretty good. All they need to exercise right now is patience. From what you've seen, it is the first live game of the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport. Are you impressed? And who do you think should walk away a worthy opponent here? Well, I think for me, Ligindogo has been the better side. And I think if they... Uh, continue doing what they're doing, being consistent in their movements, you know, getting into the final third, making the necessary kind of passes, they should be able to run away with this uh, with this game. But again, don't take anything away from Moyes. They could make a comeback. And they've never actually gone past this stage, the Gindogo. That's what the coach said. Well, both teams have never been yeah. past this stage. And as I said, there is two million shillings at stake. And, uh, you know, representing the country in the Confederations Cup, that would be a plus. But Celebo, we must point out that getting past this is just the first step towards the final and towards that money. Are they good enough? From what we've seen of these two teams, are they good enough to actually stand up and be counted against the top 16 of the league? Well, teams like this ones, once they start progressing slowly, you know, they get more confidence. They are definitely going to give the other teams in the Premier League a run for their money. Never rule them out, Chico. Well, David versus Goliath, an opportunity to find out if there is a David in uh, from these two teams, an opportunity to get closer to the two million shillings and, of course, face one team from the Kenya Premier League. But first, they have to deal with each other. Moyes, League in Dogo, second half, next. Welcome back to the Nairobi City Stadium. It's the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport. On the very first game to be televised live for you is Moyas versus Ligindogo. Of course, it's the second weekend of the tournament that was previously called Moy Golden Cup, also called President's Cup, and later on FKF Cup, and now the Go TV Shield. And um, a couple of matches well played, there will be seven other matches we played over the weekend for the same. And uh, you might just want to know that uh, the 16 Premier League uh, teams uh, have been given a bye into the second round of the tournament.
tournament, that means there will be a wait in 16 teams from uh, the knockout phase to play those Premier League teams. At the same time, four teams uh, will be seeded. The teams that were in the quarterfinals in the last season, Gormaya, FC Leopard, Sopapaka and Tosca, will be separated as we go into the later, stage, later stages of uh, the tournament. So at the round of 48, then uh, we had a couple of, uh, you know, very colorful results as well that were registered. And we're waiting for the results of this one as well. well a couple of matches were played in the first round, and uh, I think the biggest uh, result of that was Ulinzi Warriors and Intercity, where nine goals were scored in total, matching what happened in the Nakumat versus Mulembe. Uh, match. Uh, the Nakumat side is another side that plays in the Division 1 and uh, played Mulembe, beating them 7-2. Well, it must be said as well that uh, the knockout tournament in uh, the knockout stages there's been big results that have been notched. But this one ended at nil-nil just before we went into the break. We'll be waiting to see what happens uh, in uh, the second half here. The Moya side had some good chances that they should have converted quite so easily. For Ligin Dogo, you could say that the only chance they could have converted was the one uh, Mike Machek went for. And then it was just a little bit too far ahead of, the, of, of, of them. But then they've not created uh, more of it. More of the chances to be able to get themselves into the goal, uh, into the net rather. So just waiting for... Uh, the start of uh, the game. Uh, I think the referee just intimating that there's somebody in the field of play who's not supposed to be there. And the center referee insisting that he must be walked out of the field of play. How he got into the field is uh, something uh, <laughs> might be difficult to... Uh, understand, but um, well, the security operators uh, will be handling that situation as uh, we await the restart of the second half of this match. A substitution in the offing as well for uh, the Moya side, and uh, Billy Jackson coming in for Ruben Munyao. And unless something happened to Ruben Munyao, I did think that he was doing some very good runs on the left side whether Billy Jackson will be able to uh, complement what uh, Munyao was doing on that side is something we'll wait to see in uh, the second half. That's the whistle for the second half from uh, the center referee, Isaac Ocheng. And um, it just signals uh, the start of the second half of this uh, Go TV Shield match between Moyas and uh, Legendogo, who need to put up a bigger performance that their name can suggest to be able to show that they're good enough to be in uh, the knockout tournament. Moyas playing from left to right on your screens now, uh, then uh, the Legendogo side from uh, right to left, the new substitute. Billy Jackson trying to get the ball into the goal area, uh, and it is repulsed, it goes up for a throw in. It's going to be for uh, Moyas. Contrasting positions in which they are in uh, their respective uh, zones uh, in the Division 1, with Moyas at the top of their Division 1 uh, zone A1 standing. And um, Lakin Dogo in the sixth position in their zone A group 1. Sixth position standing. But in the knockout tournament, all these statistics just become statistics. It's a question of whether or not you can get the better of your opponent. The first corner of the game, very low one. And uh, then it is uh, Ligindogo, who are frantic boyers. Uh, have their player, Alex Libese, caught in the offside trap. Well, you'll occasionally be hearing the whirring noise of uh, helicopters uh, above the Nairobi City Stadium. That's just because it's in the flight path of uh, the military airport that is close by. 
A throw in it's going to be for uh, the Ligi Dogo side. So, Gilbert, a lot that you have said on the touchline there. <laughs> Uh, maybe just to ask you why you thought it would turn out the way you said it would on the touchline. <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, there's been some, uh, did you call it dress rehearsal in that uh, changing room. Karaoke must have come out very strongly on his players that they've uh, given uh, uh, Moyas a lot, I mean, uh, Likindogo a lot of time and opportunity to operate in. They need to come up and step up the plate and try and force them into their own backyard. And for... Uh, Ligindogo, I think, is uh, a question of continuing to do exactly what they've been doing. But again, try and speed up this game and try and get the first goal to try and unlock this game. All right, Moyas will pick up possession now on uh, the left side. Uh, and then this one goes off the field of play. It's going to be a throw in. It's uh, out of the left now. Uh, this is uh, the very first attempt that they're bringing in the area, trying to claim for a handball and uh, not getting it. Even the Dachi quick to go into that one and to start the build up for uh, the Moya side. Oh, they're looking a little bit more dominant. Billy Jackson intercepted and loses position. The throw is for Ligue in Dogo. So back into the midfield. They would do well to put the ball on the ground and go for some definite and deliberate passing as well. Zanussi, and ultimately playing it uh, to Richard Olo. Well, Zanussi easily picking that one up and uh, spreading it out into the midfield. Now Siroma Belo then gives it out to the left. Oh, he kept possession, didn't he? Mike Machika with some good dribbling. And out on the right now. Billy Jackson getting onto possession, but then losing it from an interception that gives it a corner. The coach likes it. But well, Billy Jackson is just bringing in fresh legs, but um, is he also bringing in the fresh ideas, Gilbert, on, as to how they should play it? Well, I think uh, there's been a tactical change here. Karaoke, has, who was playing on the right-hand side of that forward line, has moved to the left. And Billy Jackson, uh, formerly with Congo United, very, very experienced player, very fast, very strong. I think he has decided to bring in somebody who can be able to bring some more creativity at the top. Richard Alo will take the corner for uh, the Moya side. A better floated corner and a header that bounces right in front of goal but goes off target. Uh, the coach seems to think that this is the way to go at the moment. And he's quite happy with it, Gilbert. Well, that is a fast touch there. Beautiful floated corner there by uh, Moreu. And look at Billy. That is exactly why the coach have, has introduced him. Good precision, but the ball bounced too hard onto the outer surface and it goes over the bar. Well, it still makes me wonder why coaches leave good players on the bench <laughs> and pretend that they're going to introduce them at the very, very right time. Uh, I'm still thinking that even earlier on in the game, it's right time to score the goal. But it's now Macheka getting the better of his uh, midfielder. Uh, uh, then uh, losing possession, but then Ligidogo still latching onto it. This Machio trying to fight for it. He's uh, waylaid and loses. The ball to Jimson and Tagaya. This is down on the left side with uh, Alex Nibese. Oh, cuts one, but then doesn't go through the second defender. He'll get a foul for that trouble as well. And he seemed to have been going for an individual effort here. If it wasn't for Evans Juku who banged onto him, he probably would have been on his way. But uh, the Boya side have. Uh, a free kick but even the Dachi organizing his wall and wanting his men to shield him from potential danger Mr. Isaac Ocheng says this is where you mount the wall but we haven't seen them much on the set pieces or uh, what they can give on the set pieces 
Well, it always gives a good chance to players to show what they can do with the ball. And this was quite deliberate, being taken by Cassidy Lumumba. He gets the return ball. And Cassidy loses the ball to a throw it. Uh, it's gonna be for the Ligi Dogo side. Not a badly taken shot by Cassidy. Well, good technique there. There's a, a form of power in that in that shot, but again, that was very poor goalkeeping by Njau. He actually let the ball off his hands, and if somebody was running into that zone, they should have at least utilized that opportunity. Someone Jao, the Ligi Dogo goalkeeper. Even the Dutch is the goalkeeper on the other end. Uh, uh, knows very well that uh, he can't uh, take that with his hands. It would have been judged to be a back pass, but he's got enough experience to know exactly what to do with it, doesn't he? Well, of course, what do you expect to ban this is a gentleman who has been in the Premier League for quite a while and he knows exactly what he does. And uh, probably he wants to set his mark so that he can get back into the Premier League next season. So we'll see if Moyas then will be getting in the Premier League. But it's going to be a throw in now for the Ligue Dogo side, National Mondi. One of the tallest defenders on the Ligue Dogo side gets a return ball. Uh, goes for a shot but just makes it a little bit too hard. Well, good idea to go down on the flank but he just should have chipped it into the box. Well now that's exactly what we're talking about. Ligue Dogo has decided to start opening it up. Omondi is playing in a fullback three position but again he's utilizing that with very very well. Uh, they've decided to avoid the depth and use the outside of this field <laughs> i can bet you your last dollar you're going to say and use the width of it <laughs> it's back into the depth of it in the center of the field <laughs> uh, then it's being pulled out to the left by uh, moyas silas were really trying to get the wing play here and that would have been disastrous if uh, the Ligue Dogo side had lost that ball because Alex Lipese was trying to go and take it. It's Njau who starts the build up on the left and the overlapping National Mondi now with a better shot uh, towards uh, the right flank and Jiroga trying to get onto it. The contact uh, is uh, with Jaroge last, so it's going to be a throw in for uh, the Moya side. But certainly, after playing 54 minutes, uh, Gilbert, you would have uh, wanted to see a goal, wouldn't you? Well, I think both teams have realized that uh, they cannot continue playing a lot of bo balls in the middle, and they have decided to open up the game. And uh, you should be able to see a goal coming anytime from now because now there is a lot of movement. Uh, inside that uh, final third of both, both teams. Would you know it exactly what moment, Gilbert? <laughs> time will tell. <laughs> time will tell, but he said we should be able to see it any time now. Okay, in the, at least before the 90th minute. <laughs> Picked up by Boyas again. Uh, the build-ups are looking good, especially in the middle of the field. The final third is letting both sides down. Nashon doing the spade work, but check now. Well, took a little time to think about whether he wanted to take it as a cross or he wanted to go for the shot. And then he denies Joroga the chance to go forward and go straight for a shot. The result is that uh, it goes overboard. Back in the midfield and uh, Siroma Belo with an execution that is not so good. They lose possession again. I think the team that scores at a park now will have a very, very big advantage in this game, Gil, but not just because of the goal, but judging by the way it's being played mostly in the midfield, it could go to the 90 minutes at nil-nil. If you are able to get a goal now and uh, the game remains the way it is, then you've got the advantage. You pretty much you got the advantage, and definitely if you get a goal right now, it will mean that the other team has to open up even more, try to push more people forward, and uh, having their backland bare, and therefore they become very vulnerable. This is Zanussi, and then uh, Siroma Bello sends it out to the left, but Nashon picks it up. Uh, they need to just have enough men on that flank. It's working for them. This is a foul on um, Sven Yida, and Ligindogo just need to use that left flank here, but they have enough space there. They're stringing the passes correctly there. They just need one more person to complement the moves. Well, I think uh, 
by Omondi, who's playing actually on the left wing, uh, left defense, but moving, joining into the attack. It means that Yator has to move a little bit on the inside and try and support the striking, which he has not done up to this point. This one lobbed into the area. Jaroga with a good ball control. They are pilling for a handball here. It's not uh, awarded. Oh, and Ligidogo, oh, I thought they would go quickly back for a counter. It's a very optimistic shot. It's a very long one as well. The restart is uh, with uh, the Boya side. I think the Moya side is finding a little bit of trouble going through that midfield at the moment. The Nikidogo side seems to be dictating the pace in there. This is Mike with a lovely through baller. And the turn in, the goalkeeper Adache is the first one to get there. But it's opening up for the, the Ligue Dogo side, isn't it? Well, they've changed their formation here. Now they've started to use their wing backs, and it means that they have more width to their side at this point into their game. And uh, Moyas, who were playing with the three guys in the middle, have decided to play with two players, and that, that's the reason why Ligue Dogo is getting a lot of inroads, especially through that middle towards the outside. A free kick already taken for Moyas. Now they realize they've got space on that left side and a good stop as well. They've got a good run down on the flanker. This is a oh, the shot that is just too optimistic by Lipese. Former national team coach Francis Kimanzi, who's also a former Madari United player and coach as well, together with Uba, the Super Parker coach, all watching this game. Oyando as well on the left side of your picture. And uh, just tells you that they've come to uh, find out what this is. There's another man there as well with Uber Gilbert. Well, those are just soccer fanatics. I think uh, they like sitting around uh, the big <laughs> men. <nets, so. laughs> well, one of the ways to get noticed, uh, Gilbert, is you must hang around the right people, <laughs> the big boys. Well, you get onto television by just hanging around them like that. So <laughs> it's a tact, or is it a technique? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a throw-in for uh, the Ligue Dogo side. And one of the techniques they use is to throw the ball right into the goal area. Which is one that has been learned very well even by the younger players. Njuku sends it right in. And Mr. Machik just doesn't go for that one. Seems to be clutching onto his, uh, to his arm strength. But I tell you, he wouldn't get hurt at this moment. Well, I wouldn't if I was him, especially if you're on television, Gilbert. Well, I think he's been the most instrumental player in that uh, Ligindogo lineup. And I think that would be a very big blow if Machik would uh, make an exit at this point. Lipese, having received it from uh, Cassidy. Uh, trying to look for a chance for a cross. Cassidy. Almost literally trying to push his way into the box and then losing possession. Can Ligindogo go for a fast break? Well, but Czech knows very well he doesn't have the support, so he couldn't have gone for that ball anyway. He would have been accosted and probably lose it. It's a better ball for Moyas now, with a good run on the right side. The new substitute just put it in the net. Yes, it is Billy Jackson. And what a shot and what a run as well. A good build-up from the midfield. And a nice little run on the side, and Billy Jackson beats Samuel Jao with a hard shot from the right foot. That is poor goalkeeping. That is poor goalkeeping. The goalkeeper is covering that near post. And with Billy Jackson, first goal of the match, he just came in. Very good substitution, former Congo United player. That was a marvelous shot, well taken, beautiful tick. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Oh yes, poor goalkeeping, but you must congratulate the striker as well. Billy Jackson. Oh, nice name as well, especially if you score. <laughs> <laughs> and he puts Boyas on top at the moment. From the Nairobi City Stadium, the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport. It's Boyas 1, Ligindogo Nila. And like you said before, a goal at this moment would totally deflate the other team. And um, you probably would see the ball handling and the body language will tell you a little bit more about it. 
This is uh, Joe, the goalkeeper, tries to send it on to his left side. And it's going to be a throw in. All right, it's going to be for uh, the League in Dogo side. Well, it also tells you that you must take your chances when you've got the chances. And Ligin Dogo will be ruining them. You often do remember what you should have done when now the game turns against you. It's going to be a throw in for Ligin Dogo. Oh, my check is already winning funds. Uh, all the side stands for Ligin Dogo. But he's a brilliant ball player as well. Not so well gifted with speed, but uh, he is well endowed with tact. And what Gidbald would call technique as well. <laughs> Those are actually his Sudanese counterparts. Uh, I mean, his relatives right there with him. And uh, they know exactly what he can do. They are proud of this young man. He's got great technique, but only lacks speed. And uh, that upper body, but very, very good, intelligent player. Picked up in the midfield again by Moyas. And Siroba Bello has been quietly going about his business in the midfield. Get ball onto the right side, and Sanusi is on the side. Returns it, good stop as well. And Jackson wants to be a superstar. And the coach thinks he might be a superstar. <laughs> well, Jackson with a shot towards goal, but this time not on target. I thought that if there's anyone who should be having more fans at the stadium, it should be Jackson, then, Gilbert. <laughs> well, I think that was a very good substitution there by Karaoke. I mean, good execution there. But again, look at Jackson. Natural instincts, he's a predator. He gets any little chance he wants to shoot at ball. And that's the kind of striker that Moyas needed in this particular half to try and lock this game. Well, many pundits would ask why he didn't save Congo United from relegation, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> At that time uh, of relegation, their coach was one uh, very good friend of mine as well. <laughs> but that is since water under the bridge. And uh, he's uh, playing for another outfit in the Division 1. That's a good ball on the left side by uh, Machik. Oh, and the technique being used here by... Uh, Sven Yida just giving him away. Good ball down on the right side with uh, Zanusi Kola. Uh, then uh, it's Alex Lipesa who tries to get the cross into it. Machik. Now putting in a little bit of speed and good ball down uh, to try and slice the defense. It's just that Jaroga is offside. So says the assistant referee, Rosalind Oyuer. But seriously, Machik is a very good midfielder. And he's, uh, you know, playing very intelligently to try and get the, his players behind the defenders. Well, all, the one thing that Tenjaroga should do is to try and play what we call a decoy. He should try and run into towards Machik and then make that decoy run so that he's not caught offside. Because most of the time that uh, he has received the ball, he has received in an offside position. And that is detrimental for... Uh, the Kindogo at this time, especially at this time when they're trailing. Well, a better ball this time round, intended for Machik. Look at the control, a brilliant ball control. And the shot uh, coming from the left side is coming from Sven Yinda. Uh, Mr. Kamure says, look, you should have carved it on this other side. It's always amazing the way um, it's easier said than done all the time, isn't it, Gilbert? That was just a wish, and uh, you know these are things that you should work out in training because that is one area that, if I were the coach, in the next training session, that is exactly what I would be working on, bringing the crosses in, in the right, right manner. A free kick has been awarded to uh, Moyas, who are now beginning to enjoy themselves and playing a little bit slower than they did before. Massively big boot from the right side. Uh, this one gets off the field of play. And some very casual uh, interaction by the players of uh, both sides while waiting for that throw in. It's Cassidy. 
Uh, he's picked up the ball in a very prime position. He's got to contend with the Astro Tough. He's been uh, denied ball control about three times in crucial positions because of uh, the artificial turf on which the game is being played. Yida again uh, makes uh, Mr. National Bond his top shot in his tracks because you can't quite slide on the rubber turf, can you, Gilbert? Well, unless it's slippery out there, but I, as the way it looks, I think uh, he has the wrong kind of cleats on him, and that's why uh, he slid in that turf. Well, also partly because the pass was given behind him, and uh, it's very difficult to rewind him to go to that ball. Here is a better stopper for uh, the Moya side, and the shot uh, by Alex Nibese, and he scores his fifth goal uh, for the Moya side at his first on television. Ali Bese has something on, on his ankle in as much as the others are going to celebrate his goal. He seems to be encountering a little bit of a pain. But he got the cross from the right side. Good stopper. And then easily placed for him. He controls one, gets away from the defender and shoots. Beating uh, Mr. Zhao with that shot. And of course, we're laying Ugo Chuku. But with that also came a little bit of a strain uh, for him, Gilbert. Well, a little bit of a strain, but again, he has already done exactly what he's supposed to do, put the ball in the net. Now, at this point, I think he would, uh, as the coach, I would easily say, you come and sit out, you've done your job. Libese, first goal of the match, five goals to his credit up to this point in the league. Well, Libese would be a very annoyed person to hear you say that. He wants to have scored the goal and he wants his injury attended to so that he can come back and score another one. But, <laughs> but as a coach, well, you say you'd have put him out. For the moment, from the Nairobi City Stadium, Moyas 2 and Ligidogo nil. It's a Go TV Shield presented by Supersport. And the second half of it, a yellow card going out to Sanusi Kola. And uh, it would be quite unnecessary at about this time. It must be something that he said to the referee because um, it's totally off the uh, off the ball incident. Uh, Nicky Dogo started again. And. Um, it must be Siroma Bello who was uh, yellow carded by the referee. As uh, Ligi Dogo take the throw in. Well, Sanusi. And uh, Mr. Cassidy Lubumba will get the benefit of that foul. Totally lifted off his uh, feet at that moment. Gonna be another throw in, but a bad throw coming in from uh, National Mondi. And the referee today has really clumped down on those uh, fouls. Very simple words. And which form the basics, don't they, Gilbert? The throw ins, the foul throws. Well, those are basic things that are supposed to be taught when you're growing up. And uh, for a player of this magnitude to not to be able to get those basics. Then it, it gives the coach uh, sleepless nights that you can have a player at this at this level who can be, not be able to throw the ball uh, very well. Machik with a good ball uh, onto the left side. This time round, opting not to go for a direct shot. And a big clearance coming in from uh, Richard Olo. But uh, Ligin Dogo still uh, get onto the ball. Uh, Nice ball control, but the chance to shoot from the captain doesn't come easily. And Samuel Machio, with the experience that he's got, should have known uh, how to control and then shoot immediately without waiting for the ball to come down. This is Njuku, who loses it uh, to the Moya's defense. It's picked up by Silas Wawire. And Omondi Oden then sends it on to the right side. 
One of the few players who's been able to hold and dribble the ball and pass at the same time, Sanusi Kola. Although this time round, again, the Ligi Dogo side pick up that loose ball and this one hits the crossbar. The two players were trying to go for a header. I think just that desperation at that moment. But she started it all. But they don't finish it off because it ends up being offside as well. You couldn't quite pinpoint what the problem was at this time, Gilbert, could you? <laughs> I think uh, at this point, Adache fell on his back from a thunderous shot by Majek. Look at that goal. Good precision. Oh, that was a fantastic goal. Goalkeeper, near post, Jackson. That was a good pass. Concentration, goalkeeper, near post. No chance at all. But again, where was the boy at the league in Dogon defense? Where was it? Well, I think for Billy Jackson, it was just that very crowning moment. You come in as a substitute and then you actually pick up a loose ball. But this one was even better coming in from uh, Alex Libese. He puts it away from uh, Samuel Chow. But that's after he has turned Igor Chuku inside out. And in as much as he pulled something in his ankle after that shot, I think it was uh, something that had so good if there is a phrase like that. <laughs> the pain, what the trouble that he went through. And I'm not sure if uh, he has been able to stay into the game. Seems like another substitute for uh, the uh, Moya side and Samuel Kavuthi comes into play. In place of Kola Sanusi. So all the runs that Sadusi has been making. Now at least uh, hand him a place on the bench for now. He's already done his work. And the reason why uh, we have not yet uh, got back into play is because the goalkeeper is still down. Even Zadachi. After that second header trying to um, clear it. He landed a little bit awkwardly and has not come back up. And uh, it's taken a little bit longer for him to be attended to, but ultimately the uh, referee agrees that now he could just come back into play. <laughs> Adache. <laughs> you got some live matches for you tomorrow. Tasca versus homeboys at 1400 East Africa and, uh, time coming to you from the Nairobi City Stadiums. And then at 1600 hours, Gormaya taking on Karaturi Sports in a game that is being said to give a chance to Gamaya to pull out of the rest of the game or to be brought down at KCB versus Madara United on Sunday. All these ones will be live to you on your World of Champions. It's going to be a throw-in for uh, the Legendogo side. <laughs> I think it will be just be a matter of time before Likindogo pro produces a bigger performance. And uh, break into the big league as well. Other than be confined into the small league as their name attests. Now another chance here for the man who scored the second goal for uh, the Moya side. I think the goalkeeper is injured in the process. As uh, Alex Livese tries to get the ball over Njau. There is the contact. That is causing Mr. Njau a lot of pain here. That's Libese trying to push the ball away. And it's actually the goalkeeper who's advancing who bugs himself into Libese. Well, you have to marvel by the way uh, Libese went through that central defense manned by Weyula and Oguchuko. But again, uh, very well kept there by Jao in that goal, in the Ligi Dogo goal. It would have been a different story at this point. Well, Jao did the right thing to come off his line, but then it's just that um, contact there. And I think that uh, even Libesa himself is not looking very well. And uh, the fans uh, might also be seeing it from the other side. Sunday, you've got FC Leopards versus Super Parker as well. 17.15 is African time. Uh, and uh, you need to put that on your diary as uh, a very fun-filled weekend for you full of soccer action 
Saturday and Sunday. It's a moment of anxiety for uh, the fans here. As uh, another substitution is done by uh, Lee Gindogo. And uh, this is Edgar Odiambo who is coming in uh, to play now. And Edgar Odiambo is uh, substituting Collins Odawa, who's been uh, largely silent in this game today. We'll see whether Edgar can uh, put in a little bit of, uh, of a faster pace in this game. Well, they'll be outlining exactly how they are going to go through this. The goalkeeper, well, he's in one piece. Doesn't look very comfortable in his uh, stride, but uh, at least uh, he's back on his feet now. And um, signaling for another substitution. I think it should be for the Ligi Dogo side. So two substitutes that they've brought in. Douglas Simiu for Sven Yida. And uh, just earlier on, Edgar Odiambo as well coming into play for Collins Odawa. And they might as well reserve the last one for the goalkeeper who are the Bobbit. Looks good. And seems uh, to be getting ready to continue with the game. Well, I think for the Moya side, they might be finding out what to do for Alex Libese, who I think also went down earlier on. And uh, is probably going to be substituted because another player has come into play, Marvin Mwangi. And Alex Libese, confirmation there that he will be staying on the bench and not coming out after scoring the second uh, goal for the Moya side. Uh, with Edgar trying to go for a fast touch of the ball and this is uh, Samuel Karaoke who tries to push it into the midfield the man with the freshest legs on the field Marvin Mwangi tries to rejig the midfield and of course an infringement it's got to be a free kick for Ligin Dogo we got just about 11 minutes, uh, well, 21 minutes of play. Thank you, Pardo. Just about 11 minutes of play remaining in regular time in this one. This is going to be a free kick for the league in Dogo side. That's uh, Alex Libese. He had that nagging pain from the moment that he shot and scored the second goal for uh, Moyas and then took another knock as he tried to notch in a third one for Moyas in a move that injured the goalkeeper as well. But happily, the goalkeeper is back on his field and happily, Lebesa is receiving treatment as well. It's a free kick. And this one way off target coming from uh, Brian Yator. He's caught three goals so far for the Ligi Dogo side, but hasn't been uh, what you would expect today, would, has he, Gilbert? Well, Yator has been uh, a fail shot of himself. He has not asserted himself in that forward line. And uh, that has been the main undoing. We only had Machek in that forward line to try and... Uh, get the goals but uh, he's been put at bay by this very resolute uh, defense put out there by Moyes now time starts ticking very quickly especially so for uh, the Ligin Dogo side for the Moyes side the probably would be happier if uh, it ended at about now <laughs> but that again is called wishful thinking but 10 minutes in a game of football is a very long time nine minutes in a game of football is a very long time and, uh,
it would uh, change things drastically. So it's uh, not good to lie on the laurels at about this time. Well, actually, very nicely, there'll be that continuous noise because we are in the flight path of uh, the military airport close to the Nairobi City Stadium. Uh, the helicopters and uh, the military planes do their landing as well. <laughs> So occasionally we'll go into that um, little noise there. A yellow card uh, has been dished out by uh, the centre referee. <laughs> Very good chance for Boyers on the left side. When Samuel Kavudi tried to get a chance to cross the ball, it's out on the left side. And a better run again. Here is the crosser headed out by the central defender. And then picked up by Cassidy, who sends the ball way out on the flanks. A good left, uh, right foot shot, uh, a punch shot, you would uh, say, by Samuel Karaoke, but it's not on target. He had a good idea on that right flank, didn't he? Well, I think uh, Moyas have uh, found it very, very easy for them to go through the league in dog or defense. They're actually clothing them into the middle and releasing uh, Karaoke on the outside right to try and bring in the crosses, and it has really worked for them. The shot just goes over the bar. The coach, of course, thought it was already in the net. And I think you must always compliment the coaches for having the most uh, optimistic thinking <laughs> all the time. Mr. Ugochuku Philip is yellow carded. Uh, desperate moments, I think, uh, bringing in a little bit of anxiety as well. Six yellow cards in total in this game today. Moyas and uh, Ligi Dogo. See Robert Bello having been yellow carded earlier on and uh, Umo and uh, and two others as well on the Moya side. But it's going to be a free kick and it's going to be for uh, the uh, Gonna be for Moyas. Uh, it's looking like Cassidy Lumumba is the one setting himself up for a shot. He's got uh, somewhat karaoke close to him, but these men have already organized their wall. The goalkeeper is covering the rest of his side. Oh, it comes from the left side. Well, a nice decoy this time round. But uh, that curve on the left foot by Samuel Kavudi is not on target. And Moyas should uh, at least work on how to take uh, the uh, set piece uh, situations, Gilbert. Well, I think that is his first touch. I mean, on set on free kick, uh, on, on, on free kick the left footed Kabudi, uh, he brings in a lot of pace and very, very crafty player. We have not seen him much, but hopefully in the next five minutes, we should be able to see more of him. Well, in the last five minutes, you say. <laughs> we have five minutes on the clock, so we expect that uh, his inclusion should bring at least more punch into that uh, Moyas forward line. It's going to be a throw in. And it's been uh, taken by Licky Dog into the midfield. Gonna be a throw in again for Ligi Dogo. Well, they've got five minutes to try and get two goals. It looks a little bit of a big task. Well, they, they have a free kick actually. It looks uh, like a daunting task, but it's been done before in football. So left foot in swinger. Joroge doesn't have it on target. It goes off the field of play. It's gonna be a goal kick, and it's gonna be for uh, the Moya side. Mundi Odenya sends the ball up front. Uh, Nashan tries to bring it back. Jaroge tries to get his uh, height onto that ball. This is Nashan again. 
Oh, he needs to be supported. It needs people in the open. Edgar, who just came into play a couple of minutes ago. And then uh, the interception that was meant to be by Marvin Mwangi it doesn't work out. It works out in favor of uh, the Ligi Dogo side. Njuku. And out on the right now. Oh, attempt to change it back into the midfield. Oh, and then a better ball down on the left side for Moyes. Oh, with a very good run and a good dummy as well coming in from uh, Samuel Karaoke. But then the cause an infringement at a time when they should have been capitalizing on what they had to kill the game off totally Gilbert well they were, had very good possession there but again at, at some point uh, Billy Jackson who came in very very uh, powerfully has actually fizzled out in this game and he was caught in an offside position when he shouldn't have been frenzied clearance uh, for uh, the uh, uh, Ligi Dogo side, uh, then Boyas just removes it totally from their area. But uh, it's going to be a throw in. Machek uh, is the man who's going to take the throw in for uh, the Ligi Dogo side. Do you think they can redeem it at this point, Gilbert? Well, they still have a lot of time on the clock at this point, and I think they've shown it. They are, they are pushing, they have the ascendancy, they are trying to throw everybody forward. But again, they should be on the lookout for a quick counter attack from Moyes. That could be really, really uh, detrimental at this point if Moyes was to score the third goal. Moyes have position. And uh, Mr. Dutchie Evans starts the build up from his side. Uh, this is pushed again onto the flanks, picked up by Nash and gives that for a throw in. Uh, quickly taken by uh, the Boyer side. Gives that again for a throw in. Uh, and a quick throw in for Moyes. Well, they're trying very much to be able to kill this game at this moment, but I think that. Uh, they feel they've done enough uh, with the two goals they have so far for the Ligi Dogo side. Well, they will rue the chances that they had, which they didn't finish off. Although Moyes again tries to play it on the wings. Uh, and a beautiful cross, and it's easily tapped <laughs> into the net. And so the new substitute, Marvin Mwangi, that manages to at least get it back into the net. Uh, and Moyes. Well, I'm easily running away with this one now. Marvin Mwangi couldn't find a better way of celebrating, thinking about how easy it was to just top it in. Uh, the goalkeeper coach running back and forth for it. Well, I think it's just that Ligi Dogo have given up on it, thinking that time has already gone. The cross was a long one, an easy tap coming in from Marvin Mwangi from a very, very big run by Richard Alou on the right flank. And they really spread it out, didn't they? Oh, the goalkeeper was already coming out. It goes onto the post and it tries to salvage it. He can't. For Kisko Karaoke, it's a happy moment for him, is it? <laughs> I think uh, he came in uh, with very different tactics here. He realized that uh, on the league in Dogo side, their fullback three, Omondi Nation, was making a lot of inroads and leaving a lot of, I mean, big gapping gaps at, at the uh, left fullback, and that is the area they have used. Moyas leading three goals to League in Dogo's zero. Five minutes of added time in this game. It's a lot of time in a game of football. The clearance makes it a League in Dogo corner. It's a long time since we saw League in Dogo having a corner in this game. But they ultimately you would say <laughs> turning it on albeit a little bit too late and uh, mr jiroge will be taking it john jiroge comes it in aruka chuku in the offside position not to go chuku himself but uh is uh tibet was already offside and grow the ammo Ugo Chuku tries to get it into the net. Uh, and Adachi just making sure he's got that fingertip on uh, to that ball. 
It's the other time that we are playing in this one. Uh, we get a player on the ground, the Moyas player, from that frenzied uh, attempt at a double headed clearance to get the ball off the uh, defense area. And that's what saved the Dutch also from uh, all the trouble in that goal area. And, um, seems like uh, being helped on uh, to his uh, feet. But he lands a little bit awkwardly on his left foot, and you can see it from here. I think he stretched himself so much as he was going up as well. Uh, looks like a very stiff leg there and a stiff muscle as well. He latched himself very high up. Uh, and by the time he was coming back down, it seems like uh, the muscle had already cramped. Ligidogo will be trying to go behind uh, the defense and at least get a consolation goal in this one. And they seem to want to do it in style. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure if it's the time to try and turn on this style. I think that uh, it's a wasted opportunity here by Brian Yator. Uh, at about a time like this, Gil, but shouldn't he have uh, just been trying to get the goal? Well, he got a very beautiful setup from Macek there and uh, the ball went on his right foot. And instead of just cutting through and cracking the shot, he decides to put it on his left. And that is where he lost it. That is very poor striking there by Brian Yator. He should have been doing a little bit better at this point. Oh, it's uh, National Mondi who tries to set up Jaroge, who is already out of the field of play. It's going to be a throw in. And it's going to be for uh, the Moya side. It's the second weekend of the games in the GOAT TV Shield, presented by Supersport. And Moyas leading by three goals to nil, with very little time between them. And uh, the struggling league in Dogo in this game. Another seven matches scheduled over the weekend around the country. And of course, after 50 years of cup competition, finally it is being put on the continental stage. And of course, uh, being made to look very colorful with two million uh, KJ Shellix prize money and all up for grabs as uh, the tournament is a knockout tournament that is open to all who want to join it. A lot has been said about the Sunday match between uh, Borabu and Shabana, which is going to be a little bit of a local derby to the fans of the two teams who are uh, embedded deep in the southern. Uh, part uh, south Yanza part of the country it's gonna be a throw in this one and uh, it's going to be for Moyas well, that's the final whistle and Moyas run away with it to three nil uh, just for taking the chances that they had and Kisko Karaoke in one of his moments of glory for the Moya side confirming why he is at the top of uh, the FKF Division 1's on A standings in uh, the Division 1 league. But then Ligin Dogo just realizing that they need to have sharper strikers up front. They need to just see what they would want to do with uh, the ball whenever they have it close there to go for the goals. Otherwise the chances get lost and uh, they don't get them again. This was uh, a very good chance earlier on for Jackson Billy Jackson, who came in as a substitute in uh, the Boya side, put through on the right side and goes for a very, very hard shot that beats goalkeeper Samuel Njau. And uh, that would have put pay to all the misery that Ligi Dogo was going through. But then again, just a lapse of uh, concentration and uh, a shot here from Libese. Alex, who ultimately got injured from that very shot and was substituted help the Moya side on. I think the easiest of them all was that little touch by the second half substitute Marvin Mwangi who was quite happy to have sent the goalkeeper running all across the goal area. Having come off his line, chasing this one into the net and trying to clear it. And then it doesn't work out for him and it leaves coach Kisko Karaoke 
a very, very happy coach indeed. So, in the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport from the Nairobi City Stadium, Moyas 3 and Ligin Dogo nil. Well, there you go. Very emphatic victory for Moyas. Absolutely annihilating Ligin Dogo, but shockingly for a lot of people, we have man of the match. One of the best players on the pitch coming from the losing side. I know it's a rare occasion across the world, but hey, very good game. Where did you lose it, though? Okay, maybe we should have <coughs> put, put home our chances early in the first half because we really controlled it. Then in the second half, we a little bit, we a little bit slept and we considered some easy goals that took us out of the game and put them in. But I'll tell you what, your, 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 your exploits, not just in this tournament, the Go TV Shield presented by Supersport, but also in the league, you've been phenomenal. What's the secret behind your, 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 your performance and what do you think you will be, where do you think you'll be in the future? Okay, we, first of all, we need to thank our chairman and the coach. They really put in a lot of effort. We work hard like each and every day. So <clears throat> as we, if we continue to learn from these mistakes, then I think we'll be better and we'll make it to the top five that is needed. For the Indeed, team. and uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure also getting into the top tier a league is key. But for your efforts today, Go TV and the Go TV Shield, Go TV decided to present you with this. It is a Go TV decoder, plug and play. There's an aerial in there, the entire setup. Plus, you can watch yourself later. And I know you follow the Kenya Premier League, so you can watch that very soon on Select 2. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate for this thing. It doesn't happen more often because you're the losing side. So Go TV, you keep on the work. Thank, Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Congratulations. But check there, Mike Machek, man of the match in this sensational game because uh, we've seen some very, very enterprising football. 3 0 victory for Moyes. They go on. It is the end of the road yet again in the first round for League in Dogo. But maybe next year they can go a step further. For right now, it's all about Moyes preparing for their clash with one of the top teams in the Kenya Premier League. And of course, we'll be covering that for you, Go TV, and your world of champions from here, City Stadium, Victoria. This evening for Moyers and it's bye bye.